Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, and so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. Booyah. Hey-oh, now there's there an angle. Go. Look at that. That's, That's an that angle you don't get to see TV. every day. <laughs> Look at that. Here we are. Hey, how are we doing? We got, we got Anthony getting an appearance today. How's everybody doing today? Great hey, about you. A little shell shock? You got are you shell shocked right now? Oh, no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was. I want to shout out to them. I want to... Um, shout out to Ian, my man. He gave me this hoodie. What was that? Say? I was Kenny uh, Anderson basketball. Yeah, showcase. he uh, he really does the Kenny Anderson basketball showcase. Um, we was in, I believe, Cuyahoga Community uh, Jail. I think oh. it's the county jail. Okay. Oh, you were there today? That's where you guys met? Last night. Oh. Last night ah. from um, about yeah. 5 to 9. You were speaking to some of the, the kids today? Yeah, there? yeah. How'd we that go? Oh, it was great, man. We spoke to the, spoke to the kids. Um, they're not really, I, I guess, kids. I guess 14 to 22. Yeah. They're housed in different places. Yeah, yeah. But, man, it was it was just, it was crazy. I was there four hours, and, and I was there. As you can tell, I was running in my mouth and talking so much. <laughs> but some of these kids, man, like good kids, you just you learn how many situations people be in, and, and they find themselves, you know, doing tough time. I mean, Where you at, on Highland Hills? Uh, over Green Road? Yes. Yeah. Uh, over uh, Quincy. Are you on Quincy? Quincy Road, yeah. Okay. And so I was there for four hours. What are you saying to them the whole time? Like, what are they asking questions or are you just talking? Man, I, we, I'm just talking to them. So, you know, I was just telling them yeah. and, and just pulling up on them, seeing their yeah. circumstances. Everybody in there is, it, is either convicted or charged with something bad, bad. Yeah. Like yeah. manslaughter, yeah. Yeah. murder, yeah, yeah. things like that. <laughs> And, and some of these kids, um, they be young too. They so young. A dude, young. I talked to a guy, and as we was just giving them advice about how to succeed, um, just business um, plans when they get out. Cause when you get out, it's just like, okay, you're a convicted felon. You what do you do now? How you? What do you do now? Mm -hmm. And so we was just talking to some of the kids, and the guy came up to me. I was like, yo, um, he was like, man, I really want to thank you. You gave me a lot of advice and just just some you know real solid stuff I could use, and it was like yeah I'm going I'm transferring to prison, so he going he moving he already had did five, right. he about to go he got to do another ten, yeah, he aged mm. out right, and I'm like what well, just the fact that you got to do ten, and I'm looking at him, and you could tell the young dude is like kind of scared because now. He going where the big boys is at. Yeah. He going where, where you know. And so I'm just telling him, look, man, you got to go in with a plan. Get your degree, get your education. And I said, you can't think of it like a ten year bid. You got to think of it like you going in there to get something out of it. Like don't let the time just go by. Because if you let the time go by, you're gonna involve with people you shouldn't. No gang activities. Go in there, stay to yourself. Find you a program where you can be in the kitchen when you're doing some different things, maybe the wood shop, mm -hmm. and just continue to build because they'll look at that and say, okay, um, you got some good behavior. Got some skills. We can we can too. take that, and, and you may be able to get parole earlier. But, man, a lot of those kids is doing tough time. But um, you'll be surprised. Some of, the, some of their stories is like, wow, how'd you, how'd you end up here? Yeah. How'd yeah. you end up here, man? It's yeah. so crazy. We weren't planning on talking about that, but that's a great job out of you by doing that. And it probably meant a lot. And you probably made a difference. I, not for every kid in there, sure. But but it's probably at least a couple of Man, kids. Man, imagine having his positive ass come in and tell yeah, you, I you mean, could, like, you'll be fine. You're a great you example. Can, yeah. Right? Like, and I, I mean, I believe without, you know, I don't know, without getting too far into it. I, I believe, I don't believe, I mean, yeah, I think there's probably a small percentage of people that, like, have mental <coughs> uh, issues that are, going to put them down a bad road but I personally believe that the majority of kids especially to get in trouble it has a lot more to do just with their circumstances in life and the, and it's not an excuse it's not an excuse right. but if, if you grow up in poverty if you grow up around gangs if you grow up it's harder to get away from that and make good choices than if you grow up in a with a silver spoon yeah. I, yeah I mean so 
One, you know. The one guy, it, it, it crushed me. He said he was there because his his boyfriend or his mom's boyfriend was beating the crap out of her for years. Yeah. And unfortunately, he killed him. And, and he went to jail for protecting his mom? He, he got he got like 15 years. For protecting his mom? Yeah, 15. That sounds wrong. This, I know this is probably tactless, but on the way out of each of those meetings, did you tell them to watch the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show? Actually, that's the first. The that's first a captive they, audience. The that's first all I'm they, saying. They're the not going The first thing they said was like, <laughs> we're, hey, we're, we will find you. I will give them credit because they weren't, I said, yo, I, I'll come back. I don't just want to show up one time. Like, there's a lot of things that I could give y'all, like, you know, because I, I didn't start anywhere from, like, being big. Right, right, right. I just was, like, on the internet doing stuff. And I, I, I evolved into some of these things and it kind of uh, blossomed. But the great thing about them is they do have a music program. I heard a guy rapping and he had a whole, like, demo. Mm-hmm. It's like he's fire. Like he's huh. like he's legit. He's got stories. CSS like, intro song next year. He yeah. is he's legit, man. Um, and then uh, the guy, they got a lot of different programs. Ian is a, a coordinator, and he's gonna have Smush Parker come in. Okay. He uh, was Kenny Anderson. Kenny, Kenny Anderson. Was he there? Uh, he wasn't there, but Kenny Anderson okay. comes in and talks to the kids every year. Mm -hmm. um, it's like his program. Yeah. He and, went to my rival high school, Kenny. I think. Or I'm, or I'm, or are I'm you guys cool now though? Somebody. And he, no, not at the same time as he, me. But. They knew somebody. Uh, Hobbs, Dennis Hobbs. Dennis Hobbs. Yeah, Dennis Hobbs. Yeah, they're all together. Kenny Anderson and Dennis Hobbs. Yep, they yep. Really good friends. They yep. mentioned that. So, yeah, look, it was, it was, I, it ain't the first time I'm going to do it. Um, I just be passionate about it. So, good for you, man. Kenny yeah. Anderson did not go to my rival high school. Oh, I was confusing Update. Him Kenny else. Anderson did not sorry. go to Bulls rival high school. I knew he was from New York. Time. I just, I, Gee, I, I, I thought he went to Lincoln High. But stay, no. stay that's in, a great job. Stay in the community, G. Keep doing that, right? Because we do this thing every day. And, there's another set of folk out here that always can need some guidance. They don't they don't get the breaks that some of us get out here, right? Yeah. And they just need a break, right? Right. Just some a shot. Of, some of them here have to clean up, clean up their act a little bit. But yeah, listen, I believe every soul is worthy of of, of redemption. Yep, yep. I don't know if they'd want me, but I'd be happy to go with you if you want if you want they, me to. Ian, the Ian, they'd be happy to go. Yeah. Because these people you'd be surprised. These kids, they, they they face lit up when you came in. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't got visitors, mm -mm. family members, nothing. Yeah. So for yeah. you just sitting down there, and then most of the time I'm just talking to them, yeah. like regularly, like, yo, this is, you know, just about <clears throat> different things. And they ask really great questions because a lot of them are in there thinking about, okay, the questions, how I'm going to make it. What, like, what, what what's my next steps? You know, because, you know, you get out, and everybody talk about will stay out of trouble. But lest you not be able to pay your bills, right. you got a daughter or a son that need milk, you ain't got no credentials, you didn't graduate, what you think people gonna do? They gonna be right back to what got them right, there to right start. Right back on you. So Right back on you. Right back. Right when, back when, on you. when people are in trouble, whether it's kids, adults, whatever, when you get in trouble and you end up in jail, I mean, the world's a better place if we're, if we're helping the people in prison to improve their lives. So when they get out, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, but... Yeah. As long as we have for-profit prisons in America, which we do, it's, it's going to always remain. Well, did, what charitable things did you do last night? I did <laughs> nothing. I did nothing charitable. I feel very little, very small. You set today. up an Xbox controller. I, I did. I set up my son's uh, second Xbox controller oh. and played Madden with him. That was. Um, <laughs> you spent some. You spent some time with your That's son. That's important. Yeah. He'll be I, a productive member of society. I, I, hope so. I went to Gunselman's Tavern and I had a really good hamburger. They have great burgers. <laughs> yeah, they do. Underrated so, burger joint, Gunselman's uh, Tavern. We had different evenings, but yeah. Um, you know, Good we all you. did. We all did stuff. Good for you. That's yeah. that's a great job, and uh, it's important to talk about these things in the holiday season. Obviously, this is our last show of 2022. Uh, it's been a treat for me and Man, to work gone, with all of you guys here. Quick, and yeah. we've had a lot of fun over the last what eight months. Yeah, it doesn't feel like eight months, right? I can't. I can't believe like this is only been here eight months. Yeah, I know. This is crazy. Some ways it feels like longer, and some ways it feels like it just started. Yeah, yeah. it does. Seems very quick. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, it, and it, it, unlike this interminable brown season, which seems extremely long, yeah. <laughs> doesn't it seem ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. Just but now we can't. Wait. Now I'm like, <coughs> well, let's get the next. It is year, funny so. Pope yeah. puts it in perspective like that. The yeah. brown season's only been going on for half of UCSS. Yeah, I think back to May. That feels like yesterday. Yeah, uh. September when the jet season started. 
Browns. Eternities ago. Seriously, Jets, by the way. Ago. We experience time differently depending season. upon how you well, perceive that lost, time and the, and the type of experience you're having during that time. Right. Yeah. Since the Browns are so painful, obviously it feels like we have to endure it more. Right. Whereas our time that we've gotten to spend with each other over the last eight months has been has so been delightful fun. that yes. it has flown by. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed where it seems so clear what needs to be done? It's clear. I mean, uh, to me, I look at it, it's clear to me. Clear as day. I might not know the, 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 the every X, Y, and Z, but the parameters of it, I understand what it is. And sometimes I'm always wondered why people who are in the mix are in the mix with it every day. They can't see it. I mean, they're, they're oblivious to what's going on here, right? And I, I, I tune around, I listen to, you know, I try to fill myself with, with other viewpoints, right? And... I'm hearing talk yesterday like, we're so disappointed in Watson. I'm like, are you disappointed in Watson? What are you talking about? We're not even here yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just want progression here. I think we were, I think you said the other day, Adam. Yeah. The thing that we were, we, 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 we blinded ourselves by thinking that he was going to come out the can. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We and convinced it was, ourselves no big deal. It was, it, it, was, it, it was unrealistic. Yes, yes. It was very much unrealistic. And he's playing better. Right, I mean, he's playing he, better. He continues to improve. Right. But to think there would be no rust after 23 months. Here's my months, question, though. Shame how, on us for thinking that. How did we that. really miss it that bad? I mean, weren't there we're, other examples in history of quarterbacks no, we're, who we're, had this we're, much time off? I know that we're homers. Mike, we're, I know. No, no, we're, Mike, Mike, we're that thirsty. Yeah. It's been a long time. you guys time. are pros. You know what? Pro. You should know better. I should. I should You should tell us. And I thought there'd be some rust, but I didn't think there'd be. Listen. I think he's making his good progress, but I think we all thought it would happen like like that. And part of it is it's not just him, right? Like you look at the statistics, the statistics for last week, considering the weather conditions. Yeah. yeah, he played a pretty good game, right? You know, if if Amari Cooper catches the ball in the end yeah. zone and right. they score a touchdown instead of a field goal, and then either DPJ or Najoku catch a touchdown that last drive. Well, all of a sudden, he's got three touchdowns, and, and we're know, forgetting the and we're forgetting the misses, and we're forgetting the misses, and it's like, well, he threw for t- instead he's thrown for you know 195 on yep. just, and it would be less passes because they wouldn't have to throw as much on that last drive because they would have been it would have been a different score. Remember, he threw I think like four. Everybody's talking about how much he threw last week. I think he threw 14 passes on that last drive, so he had only thrown the ball. He 17. threw 17 passes when they were down by a touchdown. Right. And so they, I, they, I, in fact, they had run the ball. I think all on first down, they ran it on first down almost every time until the final two minutes of the game, except for one or two and times. And I know, I'm, I know, we're just let. This is the excuse parade right now. Ah. Yeah, we're letting them all out. Sure. But let's. We can't. Uh. We can't just ignore the fact that the one of those games was played on what was essentially the ice planet Hoth. Star Star Wars reference. Right. You're yes, welcome, but everyone. again, he. I mean, that was actually, actually those were horrible. Considering conditions. the weather conditions. The lack of throws he made till the two-minute warning and the drops. Right. The more I think about it, Watson played a pretty good the game. The whole point is we can't look at this body of work. No. Anyone trying to look at this small body no. of work and well, pretend like it's representative or uh, no? No, this is this small body of work. We won't see. We won't see the real deal till yes. next to next year. I mean, there's a there's a lot of work that needs to go on between now and training camp next year because he got he's got a lot of work to do to get back. You just don't come back off the rip where you were. You so, got you got to work your way back. But I want to I, I want to say this ahead. though. Yeah. And I was having this kind of, I was doing the Cavs game last night and, uh, with Mike Steiner. I said, you know what? It, it, what dawned on me, G, was this. And I'm listening, you know, we make every excuse in town. As, at some point, people have to be held accountable for the stuff, right? I, I'm a guy who's been around. I've been around. There's some coaches out here that can't coach talent. They do worse with better talent. They do uh. best with mediocre talent because they elicit better pr- hmm. production on it. Yeah. Guys who have better talent, coaches that have better talent, some of them don't know what to do with it. Now, I played for a guy at Ohio State, Elder Miller, and that's who got Clark Kellogg to leave St. Joe to go down to Ohio State, and then Clark had a horrendous, what he felt like was horrendous time because they didn't play to his strips, right? And I, I'm reminded, I'm looking at Stefanski, and I'm saying to myself, you may be better because the years he's had success, they've been with lesser people. Mm-hmm. You don't see no superstar. Every time he had a super, somebody that was supposed to be a superstar, you got nothing. Ob, uh, Odell Beckham. Mayfield looked like he regressed. Now it looks like he's a little resurgent. It's only been a couple games. Now I'm wondering myself when I watch Watson, I'm like, is it 
him. That's the fear. Or is it you? That, that's, 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 that's the fear. The fear of it all is sometimes when you got coaches, sometimes when you can put a player in, and you simplify things and you get it and you're like, okay, cool, you're going to run this and you're only going to do this. It makes other those those lesser players look good because they're within restraints, but there is no room for improvement. They hit a plateau. That's what they're going to be. When you have a superstar, what superstars make you do, they make you get outside of your comfort mm -hmm. zone. They because their skill set is something that's special that you can't just cookie cut. You, you can't, can't madden it. You can't. You, you, you have to not madden. Through, you got to feel the best way to go about. It. It's like I would. I would say it's it's like high school coaches, right? It, it, all around this country, high school basketball coaches are the worst coaches in, in the game. You know why? <laughs> they'll get somebody over six foot five, and they'll be like, "You're a post player." Every player over six foot five is not a post player. If you, if LeBron James was not able to have the ball, or Kevin Durant was not ever having the ball, they would say, "You're too passive. I don't want my big guy shooting threes. Get down low and post up." Well, well, no, that he has transcendent talent. That man is is better than everybody. Don't put little Billy out there who's five ten, and because he's five ten, he's a guard. No, LeBron is everything on the court. And, and there's a lot of people that don't understand yeah. that because their 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 knowledge and concept yeah, pre, of the pre -program. game is is already. I, 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 I would argue, guys, that um, first of all, oh, I, I don't know how health Odell Beckham is is rarely healthy since his early years with the Giants, mm -hmm. and that factored into his time here. Now, his his best stretch was certainly the playoffs with the Rams last year. Was his best stretch. Because when he first went to the Rams, he wasn't putting up big numbers. He did have some touchdowns on a significantly better offense, an offense that won the Super Bowl with a quarterback that was playing at a Hall of Fame level, playing next to a wide receiver that was playing at a Hall of Fame level. Mm -hmm. And with the Browns, he didn't have that. Now, I, I think Odell Beckham's failures ultimately in Cleveland, yeah, I could put some blame on Kevin Stefanski. I think I could also put some blame on Baker Mayfield. I think I could also put some blame on Odell Beckham. Mm. I don't think Odell Beckham gets a pass completely for no. his time in Cleveland. His catch, he dropped a lot of balls here. Much He was much worse at dropping balls here than he was with the Giants or the Rams. So, 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 I was, so, I've always fought against this. Statistically, yeah. Odell Beckham Jr. had two drops while he was here. That's just what the stats say. If I'm going to believe in stats, I, I don't know. If I'm going to believe in analytics and stats, I got to believe what the stats tell me. The stats say he dropped two balls. Second of all, I had a problem with everybody else having yeah. a problem with showing the fact that he was open. So, like, why would you be mad? Why you, People are like, he should have never said he was open. Well, no, that showing you are open is showing I'm doing my job. Yeah. yeah. It's either the coach or the quarterback. I don't want to say this here. They the the, the it point is. I made was this. Yeah. It's not, this don't take away from Stefanski being a nice person. He's probably a nice guy. There are some coaches out here that cannot survive, I, cannot coach well with I, talent. I, I, they just just I just don't think I, we know that yet. Yeah, I know I, it very well. I, I, he <laughs> I, hasn't I, had yeah. enough talent. They have had Nick Chubb. He's coached Nick Chubb. Adam, Nick Chubb has played Adam, great. That's one person. I've been around. Well, I've been around. This, I've, been, stars, I've been around. Brad. I've been who's around. The other stars here, had? I'm just saying here. Listen yeah. to what I'm saying to yeah. you. There are coaches right. that cannot coach I agree with you. talent. But they have one as coaches. The there, there's the fansky. I don't think the he proof. Can just, the proof is in the pudding here. This is win loss. Why? This is win and loss here. Here, but he's got a winning record with nothing but bad quarterbacks. I don't consider here. That's the difference between you, you and I. Said it's win I and don't loss. consider 24 and 22 a winning record. It's nothing. Well, but you, I, that's nothing. To how me. many coaches do you think would have a much better record over the last three years with the Browns? Oh, 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 a ton. Oh, oh, a ton. A ton. Come on. A ton. Now. A ton. I give you 10. Can I, I present give you just a number to the equation real quick? Yeah. And I had no idea. I just looked this up. Yeah. I'm actually shocked at this. How many games last season do you think Odell Beckham Jr. had at least 75 receiving yards? In the regular season? Regular season and postseason. How many and games did he I play? I would say three. How many, hold on, played, on. How many he games? He played for the Browns real quick. He played one, two, three. He played six games with the Browns, and he played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He played 12 games with the Rams. He didn't put seven. up big yardage. With seven. No, I'd say three. G? Five. I'm going to go two. G, you're right. Five. Hmm. 
three of those came with the Rams. Two of those came with the Browns. Yeah, he didn't put up. Big, he was scoring more touchdowns with the Rams. He did score more. But I'm, that's I'm because just saying. he was on a much better offense. Yeah. No, no. Right. So I'm he just wasn't. Saying. He wasn't playing Play like a Cooper Cup. He was better on the Rams, definitely. Yes. But he wasn't so, playing like a so, star on the so Rams. So humor me. Yeah. What if I'm right? What if what if Stefanski cannot elicit? Here's the problem when you have better players. You have to coach less. It's different how you coach. And now I'm giving you counsel because I have to rely on you the fact that you've got talent and you're going to be able to make some plays. And it's uncomfortable for people because yeah. I'm but not. This is not I'm, basketball, I'm, I'm, Brandon. No, it's it's different. This, it's, this, it's, it's not Adam, the same. Adam, Adam the plays. same. The coaching, no, no, no. coaching is, is coaching. It's not the same. It is, it is the, the same. same. So it let me is show the you same. How, let me show yeah. you this. If you got an elite quarterback, it's the same. Yeah. Peyton Manning, he called whatever you want to call. Run pass, whatever it is. He has the ability. To, a, a play will be called, and then Peyton can change it if he wants. So, which so, I'm sure Watson will have the same well, thing. Well, well, here, here's another thing too. Yeah. You also have when you a quarterback who's seeing the field the different way. He can come in and say, "Hey, well, we with our plan, our scripted plays, they ain't gonna work today." We but see, to you're to, saying that is if he, if if Deshaun Watson's not allowed to do that, I don't think that will be the case. Well, well, here's what we're saying. Yeah. His 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 autonomy and what he's able to do. Is way different from what a did, a did Jacoby Brissett would be. Jacoby Brissett, when he gets to the line of scrimmage, it's run that play. Right. Yeah. Baker Mayfield, run that play. Run that. Don't right. you be all the boys. But you're saying as, as if Stefanski hasn't let Watson do that. A, we don't know, and B, it's it's only been four games. Is your concern more one of attitude that he isn't someone who inspires his? players. Oh, is that think, the concern? I, I, oh, I think that's obvious. But I'm saying, is that the main concern? Well, I, or is it inability or is it inability to inspire? Mike, I think it's an ability to elicit top performance out of people is obvious. So that's inspired. If you've been in sports, you know it. I mean, it's, it's real clear. Either you have it or you don't have it, right? You don't. But you said, Bray, you said he can't coach superstars. He hasn't had many superstars. I'm, tell, he I'm telling you what I see from but, well, from, I'm trying, to, I, I'm trying on, to understand I, it. Well, I'm trying to give it to you. And I'm saying I, I, we've had improvement by the offense. Yeah. My eyesight tells me yeah. that he does not. He works better with lesser talent. That's but a, that's who's my, the great talent that has failed under him. So, I'm trying so, to understand so let me, that. So let me give you this. Yeah. Um, if you go back and look at the statistics, yeah. Jarvis Landry was better under Freddie Kitchens. Odell Beckham Jr. was better under Freddie Kitchens. Nick Chubb. Two years in a row, we yeah. oh, we talked about Nick Chubb not getting the ball. But, well, the here, happened. but Odell didn't G, play a full G, season. G, on this G event. let me tell you this. And Jarvis so, Landry's so, slowly so getting older. Here. I want you to throw this in here. Yeah, they just wasted Kareem Hunt. Kareem they Hunt wasted was him. a no. They show. wasted they him. They just. I don't understand. Kareem, the, <laughs> Kareem Hunt's a number two running back. What do you want to do? How Kareem, much do you they play wasted him? the talent of Kareem. They didn't, Hunt. Even, they didn't even try to use him. But you even agreed with me that he he is clearly lost a step. But here's seemed pretty obvious. But here's the thing. That's that's like being. Like well, my car didn't start, but you didn't have it in the garage for two summers. Right, <laughs> you gotta use it, bro. But they did use him. He played plenty the last couple of years. No, he See, how, how much do you, how many you no, had Nick Chubb? How many carries so, did you expect we, to get? We, we talked we, about Chubb we, and Hunt we, in the backfield we, we will see. multiple times. We will see when Chubb Kareem, and Hunt we, had more carries we, than any backfield tandem in the league. I'm we, talking about this in, year. I'm we, talking about in conjunction the in the backfield the same right. time. They you use it. It was popular. They get seven yards. They leave it alone. That is that's unequivocal. That's facts. Well, that's an argument whether you should le use them together or not is a fair argument, and I agree with you. I would like to see it, but in, to in, in total, they did play a lot, and they combined for more carries than any running backs in the league. What, that's just, that's a fact too. Here, here's here's what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at when you look at Kevin Stefanski, yeah, a 500 record or being decent. That's not good enough. 25 and 23 is not a good record. That is not championship level. No, no. agreed. It's, it's got to be better. And so, it, it's, it's, no, it's, much better. It's mediocre. Agreed. It's what agreed, it is. guys. It's mediocre. Okay, right. but he's had mediocre but talent at quarterback. Yeah, let me tell you something. Would you call this quarterback situation ideal this year for him? This, I mean, this, that's not this a great situation. Hate about, this is what I hate about this yeah. town, right? Call a spade a spade, right? I played for a coach. Let me tell you what the Bulls did, Adam. Yeah. We went to the Eastern Conference Final, one game away from playing the Lakers in the championship. Two weeks later, they fired Doug Collins. You out of here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they felt like he couldn't get us over. And the how many years did he have Michael Jordan before that happened? How many years? Three years that I was there. Okay. Well, they don't have Michael Jordan. No, now yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, hold on. Is now that, they do. No, no. You're missing my point again. My yeah. point is organizations right. have to have the pulse. 
right? right? The fingertip on the pulse, right? And if it doesn't pop, don't cloud yourself to be like, well, I'm getting yeah. that. Ah, this is another well, year. Well, you could have said the same thing about the Bengals after two years with Zach Taylor. Every Bengal fan wanted him fired. Now he's a genius. They go, why? Because he got Joe Burrow. He's not He's not a better coach. So, he got Joe Burrow. So, let me ask you, so, if, so if, here, if the same th- team that got to the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Yeah. Is the same team that ended up winning the championship. Right. It wasn't no more additions coming, right? It was the same players, right? Right. What Phil did came in and said, listen, I'm going to give you, Scotty, and you, Mike, and Horace some more autonomy. I'm going to sit here. Where Doug was trying to manage everybody's goal. This is what you I, do. I you got to fit into this but slot. You're, you're assuming that Deshaun Watson's not going to have any autonomy, and I'm assuming that's I, not I, the case. All I'm assuming is what I see. But and what I, do you I, see? I don't see much. So you want him fired? You want him fired? Oh, I want him gone. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, right. I don't I, here. I don't want him fired. Right. The, the the scenario that I see before my eyes, Mike, tells me that there needs to be a change coming. Right? Okay. I'm not a guy that just wants to make a change. Celebrating a change. It. Right. Yeah. right. But that's I'm, all the Browns have done is make right. change. But sometimes, for Adam, years. when you're yeah. the CEO at the top, you that's have to right. make a change. I'm just I think in the end for me, okay, and I've been the first one in this town for years screaming, fire this guy, fire that guy, always. I wanted Hugh out. I wanted Judd out. I wanted Shermer out. I wanted them all mm-hmm. out. And with Stefanski, do I think Stefanski's an elite coach? I don't. I don't. But I don't think there's that many elite coaches. Yeah. And I think a lot of coaches get better as time goes on. Now, I think Kevin Stefanski's good enough. And I think working with Watson and having Watson for a full year, he will be good enough and he will do a good job and he will turn it around next year. Obviously, I could be wrong. None of us know that for sure. If I thought there was a clear answer for a better head coach, I could, I would definitely be open to it, but I don't think there is. So I don't, I'm not speaking totally with Watson. Yeah, there's the management or the organization. He has failed to manage Joe Woods in the defense. He's failed to be the CEO of this That's team. That's fair. He has. That's right? fair. It I, is time. Here, let me tell you something. It is time that if you if you want to be because you have a small window here. Shovel I don't believe that. I think that's getting talked about a lot. I think Chubb window closes. I don't. Right? Ca- it doesn't matter. They win. Say, a, they're going to win a championship based on Deshaun Watson. That's the bottom me, line. Me, uh, no, 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 no. You can't. You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. You, you can't, you can't, can't boil it down to that. Mm-mm. You can't boil it down. No, no. To no that but boy. here's my point, G. When you have a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, yeah. If your team is smart around him, now it's a fair to argue the Browns are not smart around him. I mean, in terms of management, but if you have a good team, yeah. If you have a good organization. And you have an elite quarterback, which I believe Deshaun Watson is and will be by next year. Your window should never close as, he, as long as he's playing at an elite level. That doesn't mean you don't have to have good talent around him. But the opportunity but is a, always there. The opportunity should always be there for you to win as yes. long as you have an elite quarterback. If you, so it shouldn't be a three-year if window. If you make the necessary and, moves. Yes, absolutely. And guess what? They have, and they have shown they that should, they, have not, they are not even competent about making those necessary moves. So are we moves. getting rid of the entire, the entire organization now, I, except I for think, Sean Watson and rebuilding think, around him and Jimmy Haslam? I think this front office is... Uh, not a failure, but it's not great. So I so think I'm, it's in so the middle. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, asking for I'm calls not, of action. I'm not even into the front. Of, here, the calls of action, the coaches have got to go. Okay, just, just, coach, just, just coach straight out, straight up, <laughs> just as a player, they got to go, right? Man, they okay. got to go. Right? GM stays. I won't even get to the front office. Okay. I'm just staying right here on the field from what I, what my eyes show me and mm-hmm. tell me, right? And my league uh, and my knowledge of being around somebody that knows how to elicit that out of I, people. I'm, I'm, he I does t- not have it. I told people, I'm, I, you go back and rewind every single tape I said, and I told Kevin Stefanski this last year. You said it was Odell Beckham. You got rid of him. We rode with you. We then said you shouldn't play Baker Mayfield because he's hurt. Guess what? You, you said it was Baker. You got rid of him. Now, guess what? You got this year. If you, you're a fool, if you think you not next up on the evaluation timetable. He is. So my thing is this, and guess what? He has not made the moves necessary to say that he is is completely all in on winning because I always say it, and people can't refute it. They give him passes for it. To me, it is almost an fireable offense based on him having Joe Woods still in the locker room teaching something. That's fireable. And in that's, I think that's the most egregious failure by the Browns is that they haven't already made changes to the other coaches. Well, here, here, is this a call? Here, here. I, well, I That's assumed it was, although we were just hearing from who, did, who told us we they think it might not be. I don't well, know. Here's the, here's the other thing. Yeah. Is it me or is it or is my eyes lying to me, right? His players are slowly defecting on him. 
that the shenanigans with Miles Garrett last week. That was a de facto. Yeah, okay. Screw you. Screw you. you. Yeah. That's what that was. That's that, what that, that was. That's what that was. Be, and, and as a player, was it? Do you know that? Uh, like, do we have? No, that I'm just saying what I. That's the yeah. way it seems. That, yeah, that's it. Appears that way, but it does. That's nothing. Yeah. Someone told you or anything. Well, here, here's 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 what I'm gonna say about that. When you get to be a player and you frustrated, yeah, you and, start acting and, out, and, and, and you there's no recourse. You start acting out. These guys, out. it's no accountability for what we running or calling. I'm put, I'm busting my tail out here. I'm hurt, and these stupid game plans keep coming up every week. Everybody in my community is like, why don't you guys make adjustments? You got coaches saying it was hard because players went. When people make comments like that, that means you're incompetent. And when people are over you that are incompetent, the only way you get people's Attention is to start acting out and doing stuff. I ain't showing up to that. Why well, I'm gonna show up to that? We all talk about it. When you, if you want accountability in your building, if you want players to play hard, they gotta know that they got the same energy for the players as the people but, you put on Z, that staff. Z, there's some accountability here. So when you talk about real accountability in professional sports, is this right? You have to hold people accountable. Now you look around this league, and how many people got snatched out of prominent positions? Hack it because halfway through the it year, get up out of it. It wasn't going right. It, right. That's the only thing they understand. What do you mean it's me? Oh, it's Bye. you. You out. Speaking of Easy. accountability, though, isn't, don't the players have some accountability to play out, play as hard as they can, regardless? Or, or have, they got to pout like this. Players gotta, have here, Mike. Players have to be managed, right? When you making a million, two million, three million dollars, I ain't listening to what you talking about. Only thing I understand that is that like a you problem. Mm, it ain't a you problem. You have it's, to. This is it. how it works. You have okay. to. This, we not in. This you, not Ohio State you anymore. You have to. Yeah, I mean, listen. That. It is. That's one guy. Hey, okay. I'm just Miles saying. Garrett was capable of it. Miles of Garrett. I, I said before I didn't. I, I, I mean, I think highly of Miles Garrett. I don't like the way he handled the situation. I think he's made two bad, bad decisions this year with the reckless driving and 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 this situation. He was held accountable. Yeah. I think it's very fair to argue that Joe Woods has not been held accountable. I think it's a fair argument. I think that's the biggest that I think. That, and, what, and I mean, it just yeah. And, yeah. and for you, why? Can you tell me why? I have no good here? answer. Would you tell me why he is still here? I think why Mike Joe Lucas might here. have the answer right back there because What's he has up, a Mike? place that has all the answers. I, I don't know. It's I a have good a discussion. sheet that may tell us the answer. We're going to bring. Won't be the last time. Good debate, guys. Yeah. And I, as we bring into Quell yeah. with this. We're going to remind you guys that our Browns talk is sponsored by Cuyahoga Community College. There it is. Hey, there it is. Oh, got it right. Last Look at time that. in 2022, how to do it right. Tri-C supports their students financially, professionally, right. and personally, opening up doors of endless possibilities, including why they're not being held accountable. The biggest, the biggest jewel in the county. Tri-C is where the future starts, and it starts right now. Classes begin January 17, 2023. And Dequell, welcome back. What's Dequell, up, what's up, buddy? What's going on, fellas? How are you? My so, boy, what's DQ. What's up, baby? Oh, not much, man. Getting ready for the holidays. That's all. How you yeah. feeling? I'm feeling feeling all right. You know, they, I'm actually walking without the the crutch right now, so I'm in the boot. So you know, every day gets better with this this Achilles. And uh, Christmas was great. My son had a great time. All he cares about were, were Beyblades. I don't know if you guys know what the heck that is, but <laughs> oh yeah, some yeah. toy that spins around. Oh yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I bought uh, that for my son a few years ago. I don't know what Got your. Uh, can I interject myself really quick? Because I yes. heard the conversation That's about. That's a nice hat you, you know, got on. <laughs> oh, appreciate it. You know, I'm getting ready for the Duke Mayo Bowl uh, uh, yeah, this yeah. evening. Yeah, yeah. twelve o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, the the whole Kevin Stefanski argument. I, you know, G Brad, I understand what you're saying, but I also have to side with with Bull on this one. I think you keep him. I don't think he he has done anything to have. Anything he's done up until this point is a fireball offense. I mean, you look at this year as a mulligan. You look at everything that he's had at quarterback. You look at all the things that the, – well, the biggest overall reason to me is just that guy right here, Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. This was a collective effort from – this was an organizational pick in terms of the head coach, GM, um, ownership to say, you know what, we're yeah, going to bring no a guy in that we think you can work with. So just by the mere fact that Desha Deshaun Watson is here – they're not going to blow up everything up. I think what needs to happen before we get to Kevin Stefanski and him being if, and seeing whether or not he's the right man for the job, I think you have to look at the defensive coordinator standpoint. I think there's a pecking order. Obviously, the defense underachieved mightily this year on top of, you know, having guys off the street play linebacker and all these other different external factors. I think you got to start there. I think without a doubt, in my opinion, Joe Woods, 
even though I hate to have a, a man lose a job, but he's not the guy for the job. He's not coaching, inspiring football. He's not having his assistants uh, do the job. So I think clean slate on the defensive side of the ball. Now when you get that fixed and you adjust it, and if things don't work out, now you have to start to work your way up the ladder and say, you know what, Kevin? You know, you keep swinging and missing. It's not working. And I, But I don't think we're there just yet. I think right now with the defense underachieving, we're going to have to see an off full offseason with Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper. They're already talking about getting together in the offseason. So uh, and the whole Deshaun Watson, I, I just think this experiment needs another year for us to to make a definitive answer whether so, or not Kevin well, well, the, 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 what, the Go well, ahead, I, I will say because I want to ask the quail some too. So my thing is, in my in my heart of hearts, do I think they they get rid of Stefanski? No, uh, mm. I, for some of the reasons that you just named. But Kevin Stefanski, in my opinion, has set himself up to lose credibility. He has set himself up to give himself a more difficult time than needs to be. For me, I'm, I'm confused why you wouldn't be proactive as a head coach to get your other guys to, to buy in and say, look, when I say we, th this ain't acceptable, I'll go to the Super Bowl. What we doing on defense is, is, is for lack of a better term, piss poor. And I don't care if you're my brother over there, if my, you're my cousin or my mama over there coaching. You got that ain't good enough. We can't do it. You're gonna and, fire your own mom. Yes, a uh, heartbeat. <laughs> Bye, mom. <laughs> Bye. You're not doing the job. I, hey, see, see, I want to win. See, Thanksgiving so awkward. I want to win at the <laughs> highest levels. I yeah. don't care about nothing else. Yes. Ever. Like I, that's all I care about. So if you're not gonna be there to get me there. I need to show my players that if you ain't in your gap, I will fire you too. <clears throat> if you not if you not doing what you're supposed to do, I will get rid of you too. And so for me, when you let him sit there, in a way, ain't that really causing, ain't, ain't that really you throwing games? Mm -hmm. If you know somebody's over there and you can't win and your offense is great, ain't that like literally putting your head and say, I'm gonna imagine this isn't happening and I wait to, to, to handle it when yeah. it's more convenient. Yeah, that's the Cleveland way. All right. You know what, I, I, you, <laughs> listen, I don't disagree with anything you said. I think it's, it's all, I've seen, you know, teams orchestrate that in a different manner. Like, for for instance, when I was in um, with the Colts in, New, uh, I almost said New England, Indianapolis, Chuck Pagano. If you ever met Chuck Pagano, Chuck Pagano is the nicest guy yeah. you ever meet. He doesn't allow any of his coaches to scream. And the way they constructed the coaching staff was my defensive coordinator at the time, he was a screamer. He was a guy who played in the league for 11 years. He played linebacker for 11 years, been a coordinator, uh, throughout his career, you know, he was credentialed. So all of us players gave him instant credibility. So Chuck would let him do his thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so he did his thing and Chuck kind of delegated. I think what Kevin Stefanski needs to do, and we've talked about it before on this show, he spends so much time with the offense. I think hearing the fact that, you know what? His defense had, had underachieved when we all thought just by namesake on paper that this, this side of the ball would have been exponentially better. I think you have to be clued in to, you know what, when you go self-evaluate yourself after the season, what do I need to do better as a head coach? Well, I know for, for a fact as a player, if I saw my head coach in a meeting, in a position meeting room, or the, the room where the defensive coordinator is going over the new install, it brought a new uh, a level of uh, sense of accountability. Yeah. I think he has, I don't know if he's not doing that. Clearly, he's not doing that because it would have, it, it would raise the level <laughs> From a coaching standpoint, player standpoint, I think he has to relegate his time a lot better to get through. If he's going to be be the offensive play caller, you got to figure out ways to 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 um, you know divide yourself up and, and make sure every side of the ball is doing what they need to do. Fair. But I think in this case, Kevin Stefanski, I get it. He has to take the brunt of the blame and, and rightfully so. But if you go hire somebody who is a head coach in a sense, as a in a coordinating role. I think that alleviates some of the pressure that he has to spend with that side of the group. I think you got to, they got to figure out that. I'm a little sensitive to just blowing everything up because I went through so many head coaches and it's so difficult to relearn a new system and, and you know, a, a coaching philosophy and guys get moved here and there. And it's just, here we go again type of situation where it's revolving doors at the head coaching position. But I do think next year, Next year, if we're having the same conversations about this team underachieving, 
then it's unequivocally, in my opinion, it's time for him to get out of here. Hey, DeQuil, well, well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me come at you a different way on this. I want your take on it, right? Mm-hmm. So there are some organizations, you know, in sports do this, right? They don't wait. They don't pull the trigger. When they see something that yep. don't look right, they, they go make a move about it, and whether yep. you agree with it or not, right? We have a tendency in this town to just keep waiting and waiting and talk about next year. There are some things about Kevin Stefanski that should be occurring. I know you see that they're not occurring. When does it become a problem? Because it's a problem. I just, yeah, no, I agree with you, Brad. I, I mean, listen, I would love to play for an organization who, if they saw some, you know, a kink in the armor, you know what, let's make a move now before it gets worse. It sends a, the, the message to the rest of the players, the entire organization. We're about winning and winning only. If, you, if we don't think you're in that equation, then we, we, we get rid of you. We move Cause, on. Because the quill, this thing with Miles is, is slipping away here. Yeah. yeah you yeah. can see it. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah I mean, and, and, and it really probably comes to a button head in the locker room because Miles is probably expecting something to occur. But, and it's not occurring. This is this is the, the pushback you get from players in, in unobvious ways to the fans. The things that go on behind the locker room that, that, that they don't see. And but this to, is what I'm yeah, reading under, underneath the surface. Well, to, to Brad's point and to your point, I mean, I think you were alluding to this already. It feels like the Browns need like a Wade Phillips, like that, you know, whatever. Like they need a veteran defensive coordinator. Joe Woods is a young guy. They need a veteran defensive coordinator who prob- hopefully has been a head coach, whether it's Mike Zimmer or, or Wade Phillips type or, or Brian Flores. We talked about that last or right, earlier this week. Great. Like, they need a guy who's going to come into that defense, who has coaching head coaching experience, who's going to be respected by the players, and has got to be a kind of a kick-ass guy because the Browns, like, they don't have that killer mentality on the defense, it seems right. like, right? right. So they yeah, need that type of guy, don't they? That only makes sense because if the head coach is play calling, he's spending uh, – I, I think you guys had Mary Kay Cabot on earlier this week, and I, yeah. I, I saw a little bit of that show, and she talked about her conversation she had with Deshaun Watson and – uh, about is right. there anything that he noticed about Kevin Stefanski that he didn't necessarily already know? And her response was Deshaun said that he was surprised that the head coach spent so much time with in the position groups on the offensive side of the ball. That there alone lets mm-hmm. you know, again, you need to go hire a veteran guy, as you alluded to, Bull, that yeah. has – you know, head coaching ability that, you know what, you can, it's like a, a, a prime time back in the day. Deion Sam, you didn't worry about that side of the field. If you go get go out and get away, Phyllis, or someone to that capacity to run your defense, essentially you can do the same thing. You know what, I don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of that defense. Obviously, you want to, you know, put your imprint on it and be around. But for the most part, if you're play calling, you need a, a veteran guy that can handle that side of the ball so you're not, so you don't spread yourself thin. Yeah. But uh, again, uh, who is that guy? You know, Brian Flores, you mentioned this is a, uh, a, a great situation. Uh, I can think of some guys who were a, a guy named uh, Billy Davis. He's a linebackers coach with the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, he was my he's one of the smartest guys I've ever been around. Ray Horton is another guy that comes to mind. I know he's been with the Browns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember two, him. Two previous hits. He's probably one of the smartest guys I've ever uh, been around. But here's the most important thing. He can coach personalities like the Miles Garrett's the, yeah, whoever walks in the building. He can coach a personality, and, and so the other guys fall in line. So that that to me is the biggest caveat of it all. You can go out and get someone, but if you can't coach the big personalities, then we're, we're wasting our time. Hey, hey DeQuell, just ask, and, and, and you, we were talking about this earlier before you got on. You know, some coaches can't coach talent. You know that, right? The, the more mm-hmm. talent they get, the worse it is for them because they feel like they're losing control because the more talented people, you know, they, they, they're spontaneous, right? And you have to right. sit back and ride with them. You, yeah. I, I yeah. see, I, I see that out of Stefanski. I don't, I don't see him flexible enough to be able to sit there and take that, right? Because you got to sit there and take it. Yeah, and that's why I think it's very important to identify that from a GM standpoint to say, you know what, he isn't the guy that can that can just galvanize everyone. But if you like what he does from an offensive standpoint, how do you pick up the slack? Right. So you go out and get other guys who knows how to motivate talent, who from a position standpoint, it is it, it, no different than on the football field where you have guys at every level. Some guys lead in different by example, as opposed to standing in front and rah, rah, and rah, yeah. rah, speeching and all those type of things. So as an organization, I've always been clued into, you know what? If you don't have the guy 
if you have leaders who who lead by example, you need one or two guys that can lead by yeah. motivating, by yeah. by getting underneath the guys behind and and you know telling them the truth and you know what we need you or, or you just you need that type of guy like the Quill Jackson, have, <laughs> like the Quill <laughs> Jackson. To that point, the Quill, like how, how do you handle a situation like in a perfect world when you were on the Browns? Like you were, yeah. if not the best player on the defense, you were one of the one or two best players on the defense the entire time you were here. So, like, we want like in a in a perfect world, it seems from an outsider's perspective, I'd want my yeah. best players to be the leaders. But Miles right. Garrett is obviously the best player on the Browns, but he's a different yeah. cat. Like, he doesn't yeah. seem like that rah rah guy out, that's like screaming at everybody and get, what the hell are we doing out here? I don't know. So, does so, somebody else have to take that role? Can he? develop into that or is it just like is that just not who he is yeah that's not who he is yeah. if we hadn't seen it if we're still talking about it at this point right. in his career that's yeah. not who he is yeah. yeah and quite frankly it's very hard to be in that position because a lot of times when i was there with the browns and even with the colts guys didn't like me they couldn't tolerate it yeah. you know and it, and they learned to love it because i was consistent I hold them because i was working harder than mm -hmm. everyone else and yeah. i demanded you work equally as hard and so it's very hard to do that and so my, to, to my, the Miles Garrett point, he's not that. And so any other guy that's in that locker room, I think uh, Anthony Walker was a voice, uh, yeah. a different style of leadership that could, you know, work with the linebackers in a sense, but that's what they're lacking. And it's so hard to identify someone that has the courage to say, Miles Garrett, you got to stop jumping these guys, like to, to hold him accountable. And I think Miles Garrett is that leader who would be willing to defer to someone else, knowing that they were a playmaker, knowing that they were consistent, knowing that they were going to work their butts off every single day, just as hard as, if not harder than him. So I think that is, that's the caveat of it all. They don't have, there's a lot of inexperience on this defense, particularly, and a lot of guys that don't know each other in the last probably month of football, especially from the linebacker standpoint, who are just they're picking guys up off the street. So, so you've got you've got guys that are uh, when you talk about coaches, right? There's, there's different styles and it depends on what your personnel mm -hmm. looks like. So right. when you look at you brought up Dion, Dion mm -hmm. don't be coaching. Dion be motivating, right? right. His right. staff, he took to Colorado. He wouldn't got coaches around him to right. handle his position. His job is to motivate the group and hold them accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Can Stefanski make the swap because I don't the, the team needs to be yeah. managed. It needs to be managed, yeah. right? You don't need yeah. to be coached by him on the offensive side. He got to manage too many things. There's too many things that he needs to manage on a daily basis here. And he has to trust that other people are going to be able to do that. Now, like Joe Woods, he can't get it done. I mean, he'd be the first one out of here, right? right. And in any other right. position that can't get it done, does he have the strength within him to make those calls and say, can't do that. Got to go. I don't care yeah. how nice you, my friend. Yeah. You, my cousin. Right. I got that it. That doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think I think Kevin Stefanski is doing what he thinks he does best is calling plays. And I think you. I think everyone would agree his management could be a lot better with this entire team. And if you strip that title from him, if he goes out and gets an offensive coordinator now. What is he doing? I don't think anyone coaching. wants him to go. <laughs> Co yeah, coaching and motivate. I don't think that's his strong suit. That's his his strong set. But uh, I mean, what do we have? I mean, listen, they made a long term investment in Deshaun Watson, so they're going to see this through at least to I know at least for another year just to see what style of offense we're going to run because that's the whole other yeah. Are, are, you, are, sure, are, are we sure Tito can't? Whatever? Are we sure Tito can't coach football as well? Yeah. I mean, the baseball's uh, over, and then he can just yeah, come in. Right. Uh, Dequell, I got a question for you about football this week. Um, this is the mm. first game that these Browns are going in knowing that they are statistically eliminated for certain from the playoffs. Um, yep. Not to bring up old stuff, but you had a few of these games where you went in knowing that you were statistically yeah. eliminated from the playoffs. Mm. Very How's different. the mentality different? And not I don't think it's fair to go by you because of, you know, what you are, but the mentality of the locker room typically of people not like you. Um, what, what was it like going into a game like this? And I mean, yeah. I know that that might not hold true with every team, but from your experience. No, it's a great question, question because uh, you just you hold your breath because guys know they're out of playoff contention. You only have a handful or what, two games left mm -hmm. and he, guys are looking at what they're doing in the offseason right now. Let's, I'll just call a spade a spade. It's, it's so hard 
from a leader standpoint, from a coach standpoint, to try to motivate these guys to go mm-hmm. out and play within the scheme. There's going to be a lot of big plays. There's going to be a lot of missed assignments. That's just the nature of the beast because you strain for so long and then you finally realize, you know what? We're really, I'm just playing for my reputation. I'm playing for my name on my back. Now front office is looking at who are the guys who's going to be able to mm-hmm. be able to, to, to compartmentalize going out and playing really good, solid football from an individual standpoint. I know for me personally, I, lo- I had to lock in because I wasn't the fastest, tallest, strongest. I understood my situation. So for me, that was a moment for me to always stand out. But a lot of guys can't take that mentality. And it's like I said, it, it's going to be a it's going to be rough. You you think you've we've seen some bad football out of um, this team. Hopefully, offensively, Deshaun Watson he's motivated because he's trying to show a glimmer of him, his old self from you know to to justify this big contract. So it's going to be a lot of moving pieces, and it's not an easy um, situation to play in. Uh, be a coach or a player. You know, just well, um, this this got brought up yesterday. We and Bull was talking about it. People looked at me crazy. They was like, hey, man, you know, you need, uh, you got some, uh, you know, trade assets. The only one you got is Nick Chubb. Mm. Now, I do things mm-hmm. to do. I, I'm tongue in cheek about a lot of different things. But I will say this. I've heard you and Leroy and, and Dee Dee and Tim and Everybody say in the media, hey, 230 million. It's about getting Watson together. It's about getting the, getting him tightened up. It's about him. If you got him, you got a chance. Well, I'm looking around at some of the pieces and parts. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you gonna have 230, and you got the Lamborghini out there, he needs some shoes. He needs some. He needs some. Don't, don't and, and no liability insurance. You need full coverage on that. You know what I'm saying? Don't not get the windows tinted and get soup that thing up. And I'm looking the at ribs, what about the ribs? Uh, yeah, we got uh, the Pirellis. We gotta get the Pirellis. You know what it is? All, all the things. All of the fixings. So I'm looking at the, to his weapons, and I need. I I, I need me another piece. Do yeah. you believe the Browns are going to put the priority on defensive tackle, which? They need one in a worse way, but doggone it, if you want to see the best of Deshaun Watson, I feel you yeah. need another toy. You need yeah. he, he, for us to make it look right. You need a toy. A, yeah. a DJ a Metcalf or, or and put him with Cooper and DPJ. And now I can I, Stefanski, you can't screw that up. There ain't no Don't possible put that way. In the air. Throw that out. Yeah, what yeah. you think? No, you, you're exactly right. If I had a choice, as much as I love beefing up the defense side of the ball, I think you have to make the investment towards your $230 million investment. I think you need a slot receipt. You need another chain mover. You know, that third down, you know, guy in the slot that can get open and cause, you know, confusion for, for a nickelback in defense. And so I think you have to you you have to address it because 230 million, as you said, you he needs some toys. He needs other he needs great insurance, as you said. So I, I think they make a play. Obviously defensive tackle is a huge priority. But you're going to have to get some some weapons, some speed on that offense to help yeah. Deshaun Watson. And well, I, I think we're going to see a completely different offense next year, given the time in the season. You know, and and hopefully it can it it it, it helps. Um, you know, Nick Chubb. You know, we don't run him into the ground, so we see the best of his years to come, and, and we don't run him to the ground. So it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, this draft unfolds and, and what this team identifies as being a weakness. Or how they can uh, help themselves. Dequell, I agree I'm, with you. I'm curious when you, you know, obviously you you're on the Browns, the beginning of your career. You play with one crappy quarterback after the next. You go to <laughs> yeah. Indianapolis and you play with Andrew Luck, who's a great quarterback. Yeah. Um, obviously, he retired early, but you played with him at your first year. You go to the playoffs with him. He gets hurt the next year. When you're playing, like, the Browns have never had a great quarterback. Like, Bernie Kosar was the closest thing we've had to a great quarterback. He was great. But that's 100 right. years ago at this point, right? right. So, right. Deshaun Watson is the best, may end up being, I, I think he will be, I'm going to be optimistic about it, the best quarterback in Browns franchise history, at least in my lifetime. Uh, that's what I'm expecting because that's what he was yeah. in Houston. Right. When you get to play right. with Deshaun, like, what is it like as the rest for the rest of the players – to yeah. play with a Deshaun Watson, to play with an Andrew Luck, as opposed to playing with the schlubs he played with in Cleveland. It, does it make yeah. everybody better? 
at just knowing that you have the guy finally? Hell yeah, it does. It's like you're always fed the, the best meal at dinner. You know, you, you're never unfed. And I, it was a stark difference. And yeah. it took me a, a half a year to realize playing with Andrew Luck and playing with all these, you know, the other, you know, carousel of quarterbacks in Cleveland, yeah. just how much a quarterback means to a franchise. And just, it's hard to really put it into words. You're never out. And I don't know how yes. as easy as it is for me to say that, but no matter if you're close, there was a sense of, of in Indianapolis that we were going to win the game as opposed mm-hmm. to in Cleveland. If we were close, I hate to say it, but it was like, oh, here we go again, type of mentality. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah, a yeah. Losing, us losing, losing mentality. mentality. And whether you, it was a human nature for you to go down that route, but completely different playing with Andrew Luck. And it permeates through the entire organization. Defensively, you understand, you know what? If I get a lead, if you're Miles Garrett or someone that's a pass rusher, oh man, my sack total should go up. And, you know, just all these type of different stats go up. I had one of my best statistical years. My first year with the Colts, I had five and a half sacks. I had never had five and a half sacks with the Browns. Why? Because we were playing with really big leads. Yep. So, you know, it just opens up. Listen, every defensive player I know loves it. Every offensive player obviously loves it. But it permeates throughout the entire organization, man. And it's something that you're right. If Deshaun Watts can get back on track and show us a glimmer of his old self, next year could be dangerous if they they keep adding to his weapons and – he gets on the right page and builds rapport with his his offense. And David and Joku continues to ascend. Uh, this could be a dangerous football team, but you got to make it. You got to, you know, obviously the other side of the ball is a huge uh, focal point in, the, I, I in love, the offseason. I love the point you made. It's like you always have a chance, right? Like earlier, Brad said something that I've seen a lot lately, where it's like, well, the Browns window is the next three years because you know Miles Garrett's getting old or Nick Chubb, whatever. How many great years does he have left? But in my mind, when you have Deshaun Watson, when you have Joe Burrow, when you have Patrick Mahomes, when you have Peyton Manning of your era, Tom Brady, you, you know, those quarterbacks, mm-hmm. like my window should never be closed. The organization, right. yeah, has to be smart with, their, with how they spend their money and keep putting decent players around him. But there's much more margin for error. I don't like, like to win, to, to get to the Super Bowl with somebody like Jimmy Garoppolo or Baker Mayfield or somebody like that. Like, the rest of the team's got to be perfect. But right. I don't have to be right. perfect around Deshaun Watson. I got to be good. I can't be terrible. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't have to be as good around him. Yeah, you want the key receivers. and then, But, like, my window should never close if I have Deshaun Watson or one of those guys as a quarterback. That's how I no, look I, at it as a fan. Do you look at it that way? Yeah, I agree. I, I absolutely agree. You look at the conference. You got, you know, within your conference alone, you have to be able to score points. Yes. Period. Yeah, in this league, and to play deep in the playoffs, and hopefully win the Super Bowl. You, the, the the days of a dominant defense, you know, like the two thousand Ravens defense when they won with Joe Flacco, those late days are long gone. You have to That's be able to play mean. opportunistic defense at the right time, but you have to be able to score points all the time, and you have to be able to move the chain. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. With the shot, obviously, the one that everyone uh, is a prisoner in the moment. We see this team really ascend the next three years. You look at the young talent because after three years or so, contracts come into play. Can you yep. keep this guy? Will you be a, so all these different external factors come into play. But if Deshaun Watson plays at the level that we all think he's capable of playing and can really take this team to the next level, they have the pieces on paper. If the front office does right, uh, they can really we can really see some really big big jumps from this team. Hopefully. Uh, in the next few years, but I agree with you. As long as you have a guy that's healthy, arm strength is healthy, can still chuck the ball down the field, you always have a shot. Well, I know you, uh, before I let you go, I know you went to New York, of course. I recommended some restaurants. I'm pretty sure you didn't have a chance to go to any of them. But did you get, did you have fun? The family have a good time oh, in New absolutely. York? Oh, Oh, my God. We, we took our son to see the, the Rockettes. He oh, loved yeah. it. First time yeah. seeing the show, loved it. I fell asleep, of course. Uh, when they dim, <laughs> they dim the lights, and they bring out the orchestra. That was a sign for me to go to sleep, take a little <laughs> quick power nap. Rave but, uh, no, we had a great time, great food. Uh, yeah. You know, it's New York is always very festive for the holiday season. And actually, my son, uh, the other day, he wanted to go back. I'm like, buddy, that costs money. When you get a job, <laughs> you do whatever you want, whatever you want. Well, until is, then, 
what does the most interesting man in the world do for New Year's Eve? My guess is, yeah. like, are you going to get on a yacht and go out to some private island and go to, like, some eyes wide shut masquerade party? Not this year. No, not, not this year? Not this year. No. We're not this year. So we're, we're, going, we're doing a, um, one of um, our good friends. He's a, he's a chef, so we're going to oh, do nice. that. We're going to the you know, nine-course meal, get fed, get full, and then we're going to a place – up the street here where it's a new restaurant, but they, they have a live DJ. It's invite only. So it'll be a good time. Nice. Good time. nice. Well, yeah. Dequel, Gotta hear some music. it's been awesome having you on all year. We're looking forward to having you on again next year. Not only was Dequel a great uh, football player and a great analyst with us, he's most importantly a great human being. We love you. Have a happy new year. Thank you as always. All right, Dequel. Happy, happy new year. Happy new year, Dequel. Love you, Dequel. See you, man. Thank you, Dequel. boy. Dequel Jackson, he's the man. He's the man. I, that's probably like what I kind of name dropped Dequel with some of my like old New York friends. Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, Dequel's my buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, he just texted me about uh, right. you know, something. Yeah. Now Dequel's the best. He uh, he was on today at 11:01. Oh yeah. Uh, he yeah. watched the whole. Thing. Yeah, well, he was watching when Mary Kay was on earlier. In the he, week, do, so he's, he's he does crazy. the he film like, study. He doesn't yeah, come yeah. in. You can tell. Nah, nah, yeah. He's, lo- he's yeah. locked in. There, yeah. There's he no doubt watches. about it. Always uh, has. Let me. I gotta ask Brad and G this. Yeah. You got not a lot of time for this. <laughs> okay. Give me give me one quick answers, guys. <laughs> After hearing from DeQuell, Mikey. do you feel any better about giving Kevin Stefanski a fourth season? Well, Dequel I think Dequell make I, you feel a little better. Well, I think De- DeQuell's giving me the reality because De- I don't think the Browns are gonna pull the trigger on no, it. No, they're right? not. They're but not. he didn't want them to either. Well, well, I, but now he said next year, different yeah, story, I, and I'm with I, him. I, I, he didn't I, just I, say they I, won't I, do it. He said he wouldn't yeah, do it. Gee, do you feel a little better or no? Um, Does well, make you feel a little better about the situation. I, I knew they weren't. They're not going. They was never going. to No, we know that. But, like the, but he wasn't just saying he they're not going to do it. He was saying they're not going to. He, he was saying he they should. Do you like this? We're using a real football player now to support <laughs> to buttress your argument. No, 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 no. We're like, would, say no to the real football. Player. I, 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 I led the Browns I would, and tackles. I'll say no to it all day long. If, this, if, is if, nothing, if have, this, this is not my philosophy. No, you guys do don't that. have to change your if mind. I, I, would, I, just, I would do it. If I, I would do it at all. It, it, he just said, did it make you feel better? Though? Yeah, no, no, did it make you feel better? The only way it make me feel better. Is if I see <laughs> results. Yeah. Uh-huh. Results. That's I fair. mean, if you, we can do head cannon all we want. Like, That's yeah, it sound cool. And we might get it done. Coming up in, uh, in I think, one of the other second, uh, segments, we doing a um, resolution. For yeah, the that's Browns. coming up now, right? We'll do headlines. We're going to yeah. do resolutions a little later. I, okay. It'll, it'll we did promise that we got to do, we do have to tease membership stuff. I, I was just going to bring that up. I love one the same way. Gee, well. we got to talk about memberships. Uh, you, and, uh, you and I love doing the bonus content. Everybody loves doing the bonus content. Over time, there's the starters tier for your emojis and your community posts. And you're always, G is always chatting with people. Doesn't matter yeah. the time of day. I was, I was mad. I was mad at Bull and at Didi. I was uh, in, in the chat. What? I said, I'm tired of hearing about the Bengals and the Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> tired of it. <laughs> they like, dang, nope. dog. It was like yeah. 2 in the morning. They are like, you, why are you still up, dog? Yeah, right. Did you talk to them today about still this? Or mad? Specifically? Damn. And they was like, yeah, but I'm always in, the, ch- in yeah. the chat in the tab, bro. You know, in the community tab, it, it never stops. That's why you, there's a different group of people that's in. There's a live chat. Yeah. Then there's the people that is in the comment section. Okay. Yeah. And then there's people who go back and watch like old shows. Yeah. Just to do the rewind to see how dumb we were back in the day. Because <laughs> uh-huh. they trying to get you that I got you moment. So, <laughs> yeah, they, right. so they still comment on other things. that was like, yeah, this take really aged well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, we, we got the bonus coverage. We got the uh, we got the overtime show. Um, which we got two more shows of that. Those have been really successful. So what's the starter tier, G? Starter starter tier is one ninety nine. You get the badges. Jason Lloyd got badges now. Um, the the uh, coaches tier is four ninety nine. That's and the most content right there. And by the way, they they working on the off season when the off season comes on more ways to interact with you guys. That's right. We might be doing a, a bunch of other stuff. We can't tell you yet because you'll be mad if we don't do it. Although but, I, although we interact, you and I especially interact with people on Twitter certainly. Yeah. I now, let me ask Twitter. a question. Let's talk about the Bengals here for a minute. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what, uh, uh, Mike, what do we got going on? We let's do, let's headlines. do some headlines here, we right? We do headlines. Polk, we have yours. We just didn't have time to make it. So That's we're going to verbally do a Polk headline. We'll do but we verbally. do have Brad's. All right, let's go with Brad. Let's start with Brad. Uh, bring it up, baby. Look, isn't this nice? Browns take command in the DMV. For those who don't know the DMV, that's D.C., mm. Maryland, Virginia area, mm-hmm. uh, better known as the nation's capital, right? So the Browns are taking command of the commanders, right? I and like then for it. all these, 
all these people panicking in Cleveland. Calm down. Watson allows you to breathe a sigh of relief because he's starting to look yeah. like himself. So everybody just relax. All right. Nice. Well, all right, good. I, first thing I think of when I hear DMV is uh, Patrick Ewing. That's the first <laughs> name that comes to mind for me. Patrick from Georgetown? Yeah. I think of the Department of Motor I, Vehicles. Because I remember when I was a kid. Just so you know, that's what came yeah, to my mind. Oh, when I was a kid, uh-huh. I was a big St. John's basketball yeah. fan. My, and, my two, and my best friend was a Georgetown fan. And then we had another good friend who was a Syracuse fan. And we and in those days, yeah. all three were good. And now now they all suck. The DMV. Well, Syracuse is all right. The uh, St. John's and Georgetown suck mm-hmm. now. But, uh, but we used to get it. Yeah, because if stuff. you live up in that area, that's what they refer to yes, that yes. area. Shout out to the Berry Farms Park. They refer you know to saying? DMV. If you not, you know, if you down in the Baltimore area, you don't, know, you know, you know where Berry Farms is. People get buckets down there, bro. It's all right. Really well, narrow shout out. Mm-hmm. Um, my <laughs> headline is, you guys might not like it. It's not quite as positive. <laughs> yeah. Brown still shitty in Capital City. <laughs> Damn. Here's the thing, guys. I don't like the trajectory of this team currently. I don't like the mood. Uh, I do think they'll get it together for the last game of the season. I do believe that. And that's going to be like, and that'll give us all hope. But I think we got one more week of just disorder, Mm. chaos, and a bunch of young players knowing that they're not playing for anything. I would have thought, Polk, you would have been more optimistic. I know. I'm not. I'm just not feeling it this week. Hey. I'm just, uh, I, get, I got a real negative vibe out of this team I right see, now. I, I see. I got a negative vibe out of this team yeah. right now. I, 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 well, I said two days ago, you know, I'm the Duke of knee jerk. Yeah, gee. Mm-hmm. You know who you are. I'm, I'm like, bro, I don't like nothing about the Browns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a dad just didn't like nothing. <laughs> like, yep. the socks, <laughs> the, the pants. I like that stupid elf. <laughs> they, listen, <laughs> I need something else, man. I mean, yeah. they'll do that to you, bro. They'll do that to That's you. That's where I'm at. Now, do you think any, like, if, God forbid they lose these last two games. Mm-hmm. Do you think that has any bearing? Um, because we 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 could be level headed, but do you think any of that has anything to do with the sway on Jimmy Haslam? Because Jimmy Jimmy then ha- said he gonna keep oh, somebody, anything could and happen. then he he blow everybody out. I he was like, what happened? If I could see if they completely crater in these last two games, him firing everybody, I could totally <laughs> see that. I think that's always possible. You never know. What Let me Jimmy. tell you something. If they, if they get cratered these last two games, yeah, it's warranted. Enough is enough. I, it could happen. I mean, I'm in the locker room at the gym every night, right? Uh-huh. right? The frustration between just the regular people that are just yeah. working. It's at a, it's at it's a, high. The one thing I disagree with, Brad, is you said everybody's always patient here. They have never been patient with no. any coach. I'm not saying they should have been necessarily, but they ha- it's not like they have been. Well, here, it's not like they've had winners here, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, no, but you said <laughs> they've been patient. They haven't. Let me tell you. So, Deservedly so. so let me tell you, I, cases, play, I play for some great coaches. Chuck Daly. Yeah. Bill Jackson. I play for them, right? I know what it smells like. This don't smell like that. All right. Who would? At all. Okay. Let's leave that for now. Let's, uh, let's see G's headline. G Bush. I'm a little more positive. Look, Look at, at this. me. Look at this. Nah, did you, though? Close, but no. Oh, you got him losing. That's not positive. All I care about is Watson looking good. <laughs> <laughs> all I got, listen, we're going for South right now. <laughs> This is stats. Every, every man for every himself. Every man for himself. I feel like I can wrap that <laughs> subheadline. Close, but no cigar. Yeah. Hey, I think yeah. he put up some uh, decent numbers. And once again, the thing this that rears his ugly head. Just, I wish I wish I could teach a uh, psychology and human nature to these <laughs> people, right? See, Stefanski, you had you had th- two scapegoats you could have used. You could have got rid of Woods and, and said, I'll go with the dude that don't know nothing. And then we would have been like, well... He doesn't have a D coordinator. This right. guy's not a real coordinator. The office looks good. We, we, as long as they fix that, we'll be good. But the longer you kept him, it's, that mud is getting on you. Mm. You got to do it a little. I, the same thing with Baker. You did a masterful job with Baker. You just scapegoated him. He, he now he's now watching the other uh, organizations in the league. No, how, no. How they scapegoat people. How they going? <laughs> Matt Rule, they got Matt. They started Matt Rule's hot seat like the the last few games of his first year. I'm like, how is he already on it? <laughs> but it, you know, I think we throw for some yards. I think the defense gives up in, in the end. But I think Watson actually starts to look like Watson. You see what's going on yes. in Vegas? I, I need that right, three. Ve- Vegas, Vegas is trying to scapegoating down. They're like, uh, uh, Derek Carr, you out. As my friend, will you be rooting for the Bengals in the playoffs? Do you want me to be happy? Does it? Does, <laughs> does it? It's all about your happiness, right? <laughs> do you want me to be happy, or do you want screw it? I don't want division teams no, winning. No, 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 no. <laughs> here's here's the six sadistic way. Who were you rooting before you answer that? Who were you rooting for the Super Bowl last year? 
Oh, I was. I wanted to see the. Um, it was a great one. First of all, Odell Beckham was playing, That's and true. I wanted to prove the Browns are stupid for letting him go. So yeah. it worked out for me. And then the Bengals was in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. One year after drafting Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, so y'all was dumb as hell for telling me that we can't get it done. We got to have a 10-year plan. Yeah. So it was great. I also have a friend who is also like a frenemy friend who is a huge Lions fan. Yeah. So the fact that Matthew Stafford left and immediately right. won a Super Bowl was really yeah. satisfying <laughs> as well. Like, uh, that was great. Right. I, but here's, I will say this, though. I, I now, want, you and I have become much closer friends yeah, in the last year. I would want the Bengals. Here's the reason. The only reason I want the Bengals to win it's so that I could look at the Browns and say, you dummies. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. You, I hate your face. Is that what this is? These dudes is in our division winning, uh, and look what we got. Mm -hmm. That you, you, I like pressure. I love pressure. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be talking well, about the Steelers well, Do you want to wrap okay. that, that sub-headline? You uh, spit some bars to that. No, I, yeah, I, mean, I thought I, I thought G's sub headline would be good, good couple of rap lyrics because uh -huh. they rhyme. I don't know. Yeah. Rap yeah. lyrics, come on. You want to rap it for us? He, I could. No, no, I don't. Pull it back up, Steve. He, he want, little... give, give him that Run DMC flow. Here Watson it comes. looks great, but the defense gives up late. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Run DMC flow. Elite, elite. All right, boy, you ready for yours? Hip, remember when huh? Aerosmith? Hip, by the way, hip, 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 remember when Aerosmith and Run DMC came together? Yeah, walk this way. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, I love that. Way. I hate that flow. Well, yeah, you didn't like I know. That? No, of course that was not. Awesome. Of course not. But that's not the point. It was. It was an important cultural moment. Yes, it was. You'll recognize. It was cool. Yes. I, I, yeah. I like yeah. music where people die in it. I yeah. like people. What? I like music where you get smacked with the burner. Yeah. I catch you outside. What? I strip you down. Positive. Take your yeah. jewels. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm having to stop. I'm having to stop, have to stop fooling with y'all. Y'all too crazy. Headline Kilos. There, Mike. <laughs> What's the deal? What's the deal? Come on now. We got my headline. We got yours, and then we yeah. did a production headline too. Okay, so. go ahead. Bull, you're up next. Yes, here we go. Watson arrives. Watson, I, I double Watson. That's kind of poor, but uh, yeah, I should have said yeah. Deshaun on the second one mm -hmm. uh, or, or Deshaun on the first one. But anyway, Watson breaks out with 321 yards and three touchdowns. Boy, that's, wow. that's coming. It's oh, going to be it's good coming. weather in, in Washington. That's what I was just about to say. It's going to be warm this weekend for him. Yeah. Oh, this thing, this thing is coming. Yeah, I, think I, the, right. I think David Njoku, who played his worst game of the year last week and overall has had a very good season. Uh, I think he's going to break. I think he's going to have a big game. I think David the Joker might go for over 100 yards in this game, like crazy tight end numbers. Uh, Mikey, bring up those receiving yards again. I want to see what. Yeah, I think it's going to be a big game for the offense. I think Nick, I think the whole offense is going to play well. I think Nick Chubb has. I think everybody in the offense is having a good well, day. All they always, need is two. If they get two games where he throw for and that's 300, through 16 games. That's a typo on mine. 300. And yeah. say, for instance, in the last two games, if you get Amari Cooper 1,100, you get Donovan Peoples-Jones in the nine. I wonder yeah. if Donovan Peoples-Jones got a got a uh, bonus for 1,000 a a thousand yards. I, you know he probably do. Yeah, get, I don't know. It's a rookie no, contract. It, not, not in a rookie contract. Yeah, probably not, not in a rookie, rookie contract. contract. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Let's do, uh, let's do the production team Production headline. headline. So everyone yeah. did Watson headlines. So we went a little different. We went with the ultimate loser. Snyder in command can't even beat the Browns in the battle of the two well, worst. Why would that be a football. headline in Cleveland? <laughs> well, we, we changed it up. We went we went the Washington headline. Just trying to be creative. Just trying to do a little something different. Yeah, let's stretch Snyder, it out, man. Creatively. Snyder and Haslam might be the two most uh, hated owners. Oh yeah, they was going football. they was they was going in on the DMV yesterday because they were like, uh, wait a minute now, we going back to Carson Wentz who give us a chance of winning nothing. I said, at least with Taylor Heineke, we had a heartbeat. We got a chance to make the playoffs. Then we're going back to Wentz. They it, both suck. That's, the, that's it, what they were saying. If Jimmy yeah. Haslam, y'all, people around here want Jimmy Haslam to sell the team so bad. Yeah. If Jimmy Haslam, they made him sell the team, but the only person that would get the team was Daniel Snyder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, would, would you if the NFL forced Daniel Snyder to sell the Commanders only to buy the Browns, right, right. <laughs> do you do you? Which is worse? If you I think I think Snyder's actually. I, I think Jimmy's the thirty-first worst owner in the league, the thirty-first best owner in the league, or the second worst. I think Daniel Snyder's the only one worse. <clears throat> But I, you know what? It's probably a tie. They're both horrible. Dan yeah, Snyder's just been doing it long. Yeah. And he left an email trail. Yeah. That's the problem. I want to see all the emails. Like, don't you wish you had one of the, yeah. uh, like, man. I don't you wish all. you had, like, Art Rooney as the owner right. of the Browns? Right. Like, oh, that's, gosh. Like, it, I mean, him, it's so funny. You got him and Jerry Jones, and they make Jerry Jones, well, not really. It's really, what's funny is that we don't, we don't get to pick 
as fans who worship this team, and well, right. that's the wrong word, forever, and love this team, yeah. we don't get to pick the character or the capability of the oligarch who purchases the team that we love and that we've always followed. The perfect we just owner, have to get lucky and, and the, hope that the, the perfect person owner is a decent these, these person. Isn't that these terrible? These franchises cost so much. Now you have Elon Musk as your owner. Right, right. That's the only kind of people going to But you just got to hope now. that that, that whatever. The perfect owner is, is Dolan with Jimmy's spending power. No, Dolan with Dan Gilbert's spending power. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jimmy's willing to spend, too. I give him right. credit for that. But, the, yes. The it, problem is you're always walking. So you're always – it's always a, a perilous path because to, to accumulate the amount of money necessary to purchase a team, it, can, it comes from some pretty terrible yeah, places. You, or, you, it's you, ne- or it's nepotism. They're fair. Or, or, well, well, or it's inherited. Do. But in any way – let me finish my All point. Right. In any way, it probably means that you probably value things differently than most of us do. Sure. You know what I mean? Whether you have, whether you're a, you're a pineapple, your parents own Dole Pineapple, like you didn't work for that. Right. Uh, in, in a way that a lot of people did. <laughs> yeah. and, or whether you made your money as like a, on Wall Street or something like that. In some way, you're probably different personality-wise. And you just got to hope that the person is a decent person. Yeah. Well, you know? well here, here's, your, here, here's your story, Mike, right? You cannot conflate the two. Just because you own ABC advertising company don't mean you know how that sports is the same thing. Right. If you buy the team, buy the team and run the team and let people who understand the side of sports run the yeah. team. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I guarantee you this, right? Because my old neighbor here when I was playing in Chicago was Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie would run this team a whole lot differently than it's being run right now. Yes. Yes, he would. Yeah. Yes, he would. Uh, he did a great job in multiple. Yeah. Right. No yes, he was. That. that was my neighbor. That was my neighbor. Right. Well, there's not a lot of Aussie news. But I'm saying yeah. the one thing is you see those organizations like that, they let the football people run the organization. Yes. They're not very rarely seen. They're here to commentary on the overview of the whole organization. Wow. But when you start embedding yourself, it's like Puff Daddy in the video. <laughs> right? <laughs> you wanna hey, hey, if you wanna if you wanna come over here and you don't want the producer all in the video, mm. dancing, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> come to death row. Right. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on. Is this real? Listen to this. Jerry. Oh, okay. I thought it said he hasn't. Does Jerry Jones says team. I thought it said has been in contact with Terrell Owens about a potential return. He actually says hasn't been. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How old is Terrell Owens? 41. That might be the most. He hasn't played in like He's five 46. years. Is he 46? 46? That might be yeah. the most pointless headline. I I've ever heard. I thought it said he's well. He's uh, he's always on Instagram advertising how well he's in shape and things. I, I yeah, like, yeah. Well, you uh-huh. okay? Running on the track is not. Uh, he's forty nine. Sorry. Is he? Yes. It's time. Bring him back. I like. Look, that's not running across Damn. the middle getting popped. No, it is not. All right, guys. Let's go. Let's go to uh, New Year's resolutions. You want to do resolutions? Then we'll do Cavs. Then we'll do Tybus. And we'll say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, Bull, you're up first with your Browns New Year's resolution. Yes. Year. Okay. Here we go. Do we have a. Uh, there it is. The Browns need to stop. Effing around. Oh, okay. Right? I mean, the Browns need to stop effing around. What does that mean? That means we got to stop. First of all, it means somebody, hopefully, there's somebody within the organization that has the ability to tell Jimmy Haslam to shut the bleep up and stay out of things. Number two, you got to stop with all the distress. There's always drama surrounding the Browns. There's every year. There's some sort of nonsense, some sort of shenanigans, whether it's off the field or on the field. I mean, every year you could point to some sort of nonsense that's mm-hmm. happened with the Browns. And those distractions have to go out of the way. They have to stop effing around with Joe Woods. They have to stop effing around with Mike Prefer. And Kevin Stefanski has to win next year for two reasons. Number one, we want the Browns to be good because it's good for business. And number two... God damn it, I want to be right. <laughs> I'm one of the few people that still believes in Kevin Stefanski, and then I can tell everybody else they were an idiot if he pays off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and this was a PSA <laughs> from Petty LeBoule. Petty LeBoule. That's and right. Bull, now time for your personal mm. New Year's resolution. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop. You know, I get aggravated about a lot of things, as anybody that knows me knows. Really? Yeah, right? And I will still continue to get aggravated by a lot of things, but I'm trying to get aggravated by less things, have a, be a little less curmudgeon in general. People might not notice it because I'll still be curmudgeon at times, so it might not <clears throat> seem like I'm less curmudgeon But, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about, with, forget sports, but in my personal life, 
I'm very passionate about um, the treatment of, of people. Very much so. Treatment you of are. human beings. Yes, you are. I am very saddened by anybody that doesn't want to treat anybody equally. I believe, and I don't understand how everybody else doesn't believe, that everybody should have an equal opportunity to succeed. And there are, th and, and, and there are things that hold back different groups of people, uh, not every single person within those groups for being able to succeed, but it, it holds back people. Yeah. And so I'm always fighting with people on Twitter and I'm getting into arguments about things that I guess have been made into politics, which shouldn't be politics. And I gotta stop doing that. I wanna instead have conversations with people and because I have found when I've done that, when I, 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 if I can have a reasonable conversation with somebody that feels differently than me, then, 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 it, then the anger goes away and then we can just have a reasonable conversation. Right. We may end up disagreeing in the end, but I, I'm not going to like just, I, I'm done going on Twitter and saying, this politician is a piece of crap. And if you don't agree with me, you're an idiot because that's not getting anything done. <laughs> We're not getting no, anywhere with that. Help. I just get myself aggravated when that happens. Right. I, I get and there, so too. I understand. I, I, I'm going to try to talk to those who I think can be talked to. And those who can't be, I, I, I'm not going to make myself crazy by them anymore. It's good for you, man. It's right. difficult. I, hope. I, I will give I'll give Bull credit. When, just just so you know, he does care about people. I'm like, the, I, at the time, I was the only black person at the radio station, right? And uh, when George Floyd happened, Bull called me and asked, what could he do to help out? Or what could he do? Or do you want me to just listen? And the crazy thing is, it wasn't like he did it to solicit anything right, or right. I called anything. He just called like, yeah, like, I, I feel really bad about it. Really like, so. yeah, yeah, just like, yo, I yeah. just want to, you know what I'm saying? And I never forgot that because at the time, you know, we would cross paths or whatever, but we weren't, you know, as close as we are now, obviously working. And he just at, on some on some real stand up stuff was like, yo, hey, uh, it's crazy what's going on in the world. I just wanted to see where you at with it. Right. Like, what can I do as a white male to to hopefully end some of this kind of stuff? So I, I always thought that was really dope of him to do that. So he he does when he says he cares about equality, he does. Like even when you know even before we even got to this point. I've told him that before, and I totally agree. I told him that I think it's, Thank you guys. he's been an important Thank voice on the radio too. Like for that, he was he's never, never oh, shy yeah. about that, and I think that hits an audience that it, it normally wouldn't, is you know, that normally wouldn't hear those sorts those sorts of opinions. And uh, you hear a lot of you hear a lot of talk. Uh, you you don't have any trouble hearing a lot of talk uh, on the other side and on a lot of stations, yeah. and and so it was good hearing. It was thank always you. good. And thank you, G. And I, I just feel like a lot of times when people don't like somebody because of their race or religion or sexual orientation, a lot of times it's because they just don't know any better. Not everybody that feels certain ways is always a bad person. Sometimes they're just ignorant yeah. and they just don't know. Like if you didn't, I once had somebody, I, I swear to God, when I was like 19, 20 and I was living in upstate New York, this is like uh, 1990, 91. I don't know the exact year. Somebody, and, and they met me and I told them I was Jewish and this person had never met a Jewish person before. I swear to you, this person asked me if I had horns because like, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. But like they're in some uh, wild circles, they think Jewish people have it? horns. This is like insanity. But like, I didn't get mad at the guy for asking uh -huh. me the question. I said, I didn't, at the time, I didn't even know that there was such a thing about right. this. There was no internet or if there was, I didn't right. know that. And I just had a conversation with this guy and he ended up becoming a friend. Wow. And it didn't matter that I was Jewish. It didn't matter. Cool. It didn't matter if someone's black or gay or Latin or Jewish or Muslim or whatever they are. Because if you get to know people as people, yeah, there's always going to be some D-bags in every group, but the majority of people are good people. If you give them a chance and get to know other people that are not, you know, if you grew up where everybody was white and Christian and, and straight, you, you, you're you going to be scared of people maybe you don't know. But if you get to know people, you realize that most people are good people. And if you give people a chance and you talk to them and have a conversation instead of just being, I don't know, I'm rambling a little at this point. I just think, That's a, yeah, damn. Anyway, I, it on. was very nice of you, though, not to win that guy made that comment for you not to use your Jewish magic to put a hex on it. Exactly. Him. My oh space my laser. Yeah, you could have you, you 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 done laser. that. I have oh access to the space yeah. laser. Just saying. <laughs> Very cool of you. Uh, G. Bush, yeah. it's time for your Browns New Year's resolution. Yeah, I, so I didn't I didn't even send you a personal one, but I got one, though. No, we made one for you. Don't worry. Oh, uh, so you just Ooh. made it up for me? <laughs> and and you'll, you'll see why. Okay. And because I didn't know we were supposed to physically send either. I'm just going to say mine. 
Mm. Yeah, no, I texted it, but it's okay. Sorry. Uh, for me, uh, it's for the uh, sports wise. Um, it's for the Browns to have the number one offense or the number one defense. And w- what I've come to the conclusion of is, right now we we're in this pursuit of, you know, these mythical places. We're in the pursuit of just being competent and good. <clears throat> And we've talked about whether the Browns should run a lot. We talked about whether they should pass a lot. Mm. We talked about is their defense good or is their defense just serviceable? My thing is the Browns should have the 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 pursuit of greatness. If you gonna run the ball, be the best running team. If you gonna throw the ball, you shouldn't be like, well, we'll settle for fifth. No, give me number one. I want number one. If you're going to be the best <clears throat> defense, I need you to be the best defense in the league. The Browns need to start being like, look, man, I get it. We want to be balanced. I understand that we'll take a third in the league. But no, at some point in time, my burning desire is to see the Browns actually dominant in one area or the other. And we'll figure out what we're going to do with the other one. But if you're going to be somebody, go all up, go up top. Don't if you gonna go get you a luxury car and somebody says like in the great words of T.I. Hey, uh, hey, somebody who, who buy a Jaguar, that's nice. But if you gonna buy me a luxury car, I'm not gonna pick the Jaguar. I need the Benz. I, I, I give me the G wagon. Give me the Maybach. Give me the Rolls Royce. Why would I pick a Lexus? God, Lexus is fine. They'll get it done. But if you pay for it, I want the Phantom. I want the Wraith. That's what I want. Give me, I'm on top. You're what top is Rafe? I don't even know what that is. Uh, Rolls Royce Rafe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Top of the line. They, By the way, once a team, like if the Browns get to the point where they're like one of these great offenses in the league, we don't ever, then we'll never talk about play calling. Ever. <laughs> because it won't, we're not going to be talking about should they run more, should they pass Ever. No. Once you're a good offense, you don't worry about You don't worry crap. about nothing. You don't yeah. second guess that. That's, <clears throat> that's a great. We got to get oh, to that. Oh, yeah. We we gotta gotta get like, to that. Think how fun these. <laughs> these re- these recordings will be to look at then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody will like, talk about you ran well, the ball on are, third and two. Yeah, nobody. Yes, exactly. The arguing over how many were carried. Because, you know, eh, we didn't get the first down, so what? We'll get an extra drive. Exactly. We'll score an extra, extra. <laughs> uh-huh. By the way, speaking of Lexus, when I was like 22, I was working as a gopher for an oil company, and my boss used to take let me take his Lexus. Let me take it. I would go take it for oil changes and with all this stuff, all the, all the crappy work. But man, I got to drive a Lexus. That was fun. Wow. Yeah, in the early nineties. In the yeah. early nineties. I didn't even Lexus, know the car was on. The car was so quiet. Mm-hmm. Lexus was top of the line back then. The two tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how it used to be. Did you yeah, ready for your personal, yeah, that's personal New Year's resolution? Let's get that. Oh, oh yeah. personal. Listen. No, no, no. We oh. did it for you. Oh, well, let him, he should be able to pick his no. own. No, Go ahead. he lost that privilege because his new New Year's resolution is he's gonna get stuff from the production <laughs> team on time when they asked for it. <laughs> So G, I'm gonna do that. I'm holding you to that this year. And and I might wanna uh, and I might wanna be here uh, so that I have to put my mic on right in the beginning of the yeah, show. Yeah, you're gonna get yeah. here Shout out to Steve. and send your stuff in. And and you give Steve a heart attack every yeah, day. Yeah, every every day. Sometimes <laughs> I come in dancing. Uh, I'll be yeah. listening to music. He'd be like, 30 seconds, man. <laughs> Thirty freaking seconds again, man. <laughs> And I will put my mic over my chair, so oh, we're gonna do a lot of stuff. That's good. She is all or nothing. Like if you text him, you either hear back right away, or, or good this, luck. My my, <laughs> my brother was like, "Hey man, like we, we, I got. By the way, I got a cologne coming out. Uh, it's uh, it's called Nocturnal. So <laughs> uh, I'm not. No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I believe you. I got it. It so, still can be humorous. Yes, it is, right? Like, <laughs> like it's kind of like true. Doing. That's true. Yeah. So I got a joint called Nocturnal, out, and he, I was like, "Hey, man, where'd you? Hey, where'd you get this from?" He said, "Bro, you, we been ordered these boxes weeks ago, bro." I said, "These is ready to go." He said, "Bro, did you read the, the chain?" I said, "Come on." Now. <laughs> no, 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 chain. So it's not just us. It's no, 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 no. Let's take a first one. It's my wife. What's up, Mike? It's Mike's time. There are people. Mike Polk, you got to read yours. Yeah, my. Resolution for the Browns is to show some appreciation for the fan base and what you've put them through this year (laughs) and last year. I mean, leading into this year. And I mean that. I'm not just being totally glib with that. We talked uh, earlier this week about the different franchises in town and how they show appreciation differently or at all. And I do feel like the Cavs do the best job at that, of showing love for their fans. And it doesn't have to be anything miraculous either. Sometimes it's just uh, they, some of their social media stuff, some of their emails that they send out and stuff like that, thanking fans. 
Uh, the Browns just don't think to do that stuff. They think that it's just, uh, it, well, it's your, it's your honor to like us. We are the best team in town. The Cavs, for example, at the end of every season, they have fan night where well, they just empty out the prize closets of all the crap they gathered from throughout the year. It could, but it, and some of it's just like Stuart Little um, right. sandals from a promotional movie thing and stuff like that. <laughs> it MGK, makes no sense. MGK bobbleheads. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Anything old Anderson Verjao wigs that yeah. were clogged behind <laughs> some duck somewhere that they found. They just throw it. But people love it. They love it. And the it. fans people love, love it. And the stuff. kids go to it. I mean, I did like seeing last week at the game when they sent, when they made all of the people come down from the 500s and go down into the lower seats because they were only, like, just to, for warmth, if nothing only, else. Only after halftime. Oh, yeah, that's only crazy. After halftime. Uh, it is. That is bad. But I do like thinking of the people who bought like $800 seats idea. right here. Just late. Yeah, eight hundred dollars seats right here on the fifty yard line, yeah. and then uh, like my unwashed drunk friends get to come and sit next to him, <laughs> put their arm around <laughs> some <laughs> lady from Bay Village. I'm like, ah, Gee, I love that. Anyways, you... <laughs> that's my uh, that's. I want you to just show appreciation. However, you can figure out how to do that because you put it's been a rough one. You're just like, well, it's just a waiting year. You know it's going to be next year. People, we're still here. We still got to sit through this. Just so you know, personal resolution. I'm going to eat at twenty different Red Lobsters in 2023. <laughs> They going out of business too. Well, I better hurry. Then, I've been I guess. eating a Red Lobster forever, and I should because they have the best biscuits of any chain restaurant yes. ever. Shout out! Uh, you know they biscuits. got that box mix you can make them at the house. Oh yeah, my god! Those are my it's resolutions. Not the same, no, it's not, no, it's not the same. I've oh, done them. They're not the same. Oh my god! Those biscuits are like I've never had crack, but I feel I feel like it's the same. <laughs> my my uh, my sister's like she tries to make them, and she's like, "Aren't they perfect?" I'm like, "Yeah, they're not. No. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. not. Sure. I gotta get them. You gotta go get them there. Yeah. Somebody else has to tell you they're perfect. You can't bake something and be like." No, 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 no. Someone has to tell you that. Come on, Mike. Brad is up. Brad, let's see yours. Let me see what it is. I forgot. Mm. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Here's my New Year's resolution for the Browns. The Browns truly want to be great and will make whatever uh, moves necessary to get to that level. Please. Mm. I'm so hopeful. Listen, time is ticking here, right? Time is ticking. I've been patient. I've been a patient guy, right? I remember the days when the Browns I, were good, yearly, year in and year out. Been a while. Leroy Kelly, Bo Scott in the backfield, right? Warfield here, right? Hanford, many hold down the edges, right? Greg Pruitt with the tearaway jerseys. I'm a patient guy, Bernie, Brian Sight, the glory years. This last 20 year run has been rough. <laughs> yes. 20, 23. It's 34. It's been rough. It's been Man. rough. I mean, it's been rough. Yeah. I'm like, listen, <laughs> my patience is thin, mm. right? And I think I'm representative of a lot of people. I, I, I told you I take the pulse from the from the uh, 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 fitness facility or I go work out at the gym. Just sit in the locker room. Patience is thin out here. Hey, streets is talking. I was like, come on now. Streets is We're, listen, mad. Every year we talk about the thing they're saying now. Every day, every year is next year. We'll get better next year. Let's wait till next. People are tired. They're tired because they see franchises. We we see other franchises who've been at the bottom, coming. And in case you didn't watch, that Jacksonville coming. Oh yeah. Oh they coming. Yeah, they, they, they get. They, they get. They, they getting better. They coming. They coming. Ain't it? Ain't it funny that you even we like say for instance we got all three diverse opinions about the Browns, but the one thing that makes Browns fans unique is. We all uniquely love them just as much as the other one does. Mm-hmm. It, it don't matter. Like, okay, I feel like we should do this to get there. He feel like Brad, Brad feel like they should do this. My Pope might be like, oh, we we gotta. This is what we can tweak to get there. But at the heart and the core, we just want to get there. Right. Like in every Browns yeah. fan you see, mm-hmm. it's that thing. It's in your there's stomach. that one unifier. That's one. It's the one unifier. We don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. We just want to get there. Figure and, it the f out. And if we see, bro, I I I I, I can just almost taste it. Like, you can you imagine waking up the morning of Super Bowl Sunday, and the Browns yeah. is playing here. Let me let me get let me get let me get let me give you. What? We got, we got Tyvis. Brad, we got Tyvis. Give us your personal. Right. Uh, Let's you get your personal, personal one. And we'll get back to this. Yeah, yeah. So my personal is that you know I got everybody know I got four daughters. I'm gonna keep nurturing those girls so they become uh, the beautiful women that they're becoming. And then I'm just gonna continue to build up my city in Warrensville Heights and making sure that it's the best. That nice it can job. Be. That's Good for you, sir. Do. Maryland really ranked what 16th right now that I see. 16th, but yeah. they had a couple of losses last night. They're yeah. they, they're a top 10 team. They will mm. be at the end. Yeah. Let's bring our buddy Tyvis as well. Tyvis. 
Oh, oh this guy. He's styling <laughs> in that car. Look at that. He's ready for the big game. <laughs> Tyvis, are you feeling, are you of real confidence or fake confidence heading into this Buckeyes game tomorrow? Can he? Let me, let me take my glasses off because I want to see the reaction on the faces. Man, take them when CBS I say glasses this. off. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Walgreens. Oh, oh, man. Did he, look. Versace, Versace, Medusa head on me you like I was them, you, can buy them hey, on, anyway, you, can, you can buy them on Broad Street and Club. Stop <laughs> playing with me. That's <laughs> how Versace is spelled. He's a, he's Listen, I got them out of Saxfield Beachwood Mall. But anyways, <laughs> let me get to my point. Here we go. The, the Buckeyes is going to win this game. I'm gonna tell, you know, I've been going back and forth with it, man. And I've been like, you know, it is Georgia. Man, I respect Georgia. Jim Dog. But when you're back up against the wall, man, yeah. and you ain't got nothing to do but fight, I think this team going to rise to the occasion, man. I really do. I really do. I just, for some odd reason, just deep down, the way they've been talking to the media, you know, you got CJ coming out saying, I'm with whatever it takes to win this game. Listen, it ain't too many people that's, that knows what that means. Like, oh, yeah. that means you're going to do some, some extraordinary stuff. Like, for CJ, his biggest knock is running the ball. So if that's the case, if Jalen Carter is coming through that line, that means you're going to take off and you're going to pick up some yards. You're going to do what it takes to move the sticks. If that's the case, then the the, the Buckeyes going to win this game, man. I, I really believe that in my heart, y'all. Hey, Tyrus, you know what I've been saying? I've been telling people this week, don't take this, tell people, don't take it personal, but I got to go see a man about a dog and a flag. And they say, what you talking about? This I got to go see a man about a dog. That's Georgia. Mm-hmm. And, but I really got to see a man about a flag. I mean, that flag fiasco they pulled at Ohio State, and that's what I'm coming to see. Mm-hmm. So I got to go see the man about the dog first. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to get to the dude, the, yeah. the man about the flag. Hmm. If that's, Ohio State wins this coming. game, they should win. They should beat either Michigan or TCU. Oh, we're going to be, listen. Yeah. I you know, think the winner of this I game agree. wins it all. I agree. Well, because you got to think, Michigan, well, the, the, the worst part is Ohio State has more talent than Michigan. Like, it ain't even. Like, it's just that they're executing and Harbaugh is pulling some strings. They more physical, but when it comes from skill to skill, mm-hmm. Ohio State got better. It was, uh, but they, Ohio State got better receivers, got better quarterbacks, and to be truthful, they got geez. the better offensive line. When you look at the guys projected going in the first two rounds, they have more talent. It than wasn't. These teams. It wasn't about physicality to why they lost to the team up north. The, the problem is they got. They were too physical. They were so physical and so mad at them for what happened last year that they, they start doing dumb stuff. Like personal foul penalties, that's dumb stuff. They were so busy trying to get back at them that that, that the team up north just outsmarted them. Hey, these guys is being aggressive, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to use that aggressiveness against them, and that's what they did. Like Ryan, they, they Ryan, sold Ryan out. Ryan, they use that too, uh, Tyvis, because if he show up, if he show up uh, light, it's not going to end up well for him. going to fire his ass if they lose this game. <laughs> if they lose to Georgia? They they fire. Nah, he'll fired? get over Georgia. But if he if he beat Georgia and lose to Michigan. Tyvis, give Ohio State fans some hope. Give us a couple of Georgia weaknesses that people may, might not be aware of. What are the weaknesses of Georgia that people aren't aware of? So, so, you, know, so you know how I always, for this whole season, have talked about how Ohio State's corners in particular is terrible. Well, Georgia's corners ain't that great either. And due to the fact that we have one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in college football, he's going to get open. And if he doesn't get open, then that leaves they're going to obviously come up with a game plan to stop Marvin Harrison. So that means that Mecca should, should eat. Uh, Kay Stover should eat. The pass game should be there. The difficult challenge that they face is the fact that that D-line, Jalen Carter in particular, him being at the defensive tackle position, it's hard for to – you can beat the edge rush. You can just run away from the edge rush, roll away from the edge rush. But when it's coming straight down the middle that's where the problem comes so they have to find a way to get cj some protection because if they do that these wide receivers will win all night long that's where they can win this game at, is in the second in, in georgia's secondary am i crazy does it seem like it's raining in tyvis's car no but i'm looking Great. i'm looking at the tower behind this thing where you at man it's a very hood. disturbing you perspective. that's an old ghetto style uh listen, transformer listen, behind listen. <laughs> Close the thing. You know what y'all, y'all, y'all worried about, y'all worried about the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> he hating on, no he hating on my roof. They, they outside looking at the telephone poles. I'm going to shut all this down right now. Oh, that's 
Close oh, the room, man. Tyler, Y'all are ridiculous. I, I go it, correct on the set, baby. It, it, it got, listen, in the end, Michigan kicked Ohio State's ass. Supposed we, to be paying attention to it that. did look like it was raining in his car. <laughs> By the way, we know Michigan kicked Ohio State's ass in the end, but the reality is it got forgotten because it doesn't matter in the end, but it might matter if they play again. Is that Ohio State really dominated the first half of that game? They did. And it looked, I, at, at, you know, go or the first, you know, then quarter we, and a half. It felt like Ohio State was going to win. Till we got dominated. <laughs> and then it just flipped. And Ohio State was garbage so, the rest so, of the way. You, if you think about it, going into it, they had a couple of pass plays that, you know, one was, one was busted coverage and the other one was because a corner missed the tackle. So going into halftime, they feeling good. Like, listen, we, we don't make those mistakes. We're blowing these guys out. The problem yeah. is they forgot to come out in the second half. Now, see, their game plan was to stop the run. They embarrassed us in the run. So that's why you run cover zero. You got your corners playing man-to-man. Everybody should be accounted for. Now I can send guys in on the blitz. And they got this freshman quarterback here who we don't know if he's good or not. So let's put some pressure in his face to see how he acts. And he actually made some key throws. So that's what put them up at or had them in the game at halftime. Second half, we made they made these things called adjustments. The Cleveland Browns should learn something about it. But they came out, made some adjustments, and said, "Hey, they really selling out on the on the pass, and let's start hitting them with some runs." Now the now the I'm about to call them the Browns. The Buckeyes start misfitting gaps, and now you see them getting gashed in the run game. So that's what happened. You got to make some adjustments. It's like I say, the game of football is a game of chess, not checkers. What worked in the first half is not going to work in the second half. Tyvis, great talking with you as always, buddy. Enjoy the New Year's with your beautiful family. We love you. Have a great time. Thank you. And we'll see you next year. All right, Tyvis. Go Bucks. Come on, Go man. Bucks. Go Browns. Caps is going to come back, man. We're going to bounce back from that pace of loss. Lego. <laughs> see you, Tyvis. All right, there's our last guest of 2022. Yeah, yeah. What, a, what an appropriate note. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know? Guys, uh, the Cavaliers. Yes. Uh, last three games, they've dropped three in a row. Yeah. Lose to Indiana last night, Brad. Let's start with you. Their defense in these last three games Horrendous. has been awful. Horrendous. What's happening? Well, basically what happens is, and it happened again last night, you have a young team that is now enamored with the way the game is structured now. The game is structured now for flamboyancy, scoring, things of that nature, three things that are exciting, right? That It may make good TV for TV watching. It doesn't mean you're going to win a lot of games, so... As you saw last night in the Pacer game, down the stretch when they need to get a stop, they couldn't get a stop. Couldn't stop anybody from three. Yeah. Couldn't stop anybody at the end. If you saw the guys, the Pacers sizing the Cavaliers up, they were all going one on one on them. No, none yeah. of was scared of anybody. And so that is what has happened in the last three games. The way you win in this league is you have to defend people on a consistent basis. You have to be able to shut people down. And if you don't, if you think you're going to win by outscoring people, you may win some games. You won't win the ones that count. That's the problem. Yeah. Mike, you're the biggest diehard Cavs fan on the show. Sure. What's your thoughts on their last three games? Well, it's been obviously it's been depressing, but they uh, I'm not scared uh, right now. I think Brad's right. I think they're a young team trying to find their footing. I didn't. I don't like the lack of uh, defense over the last few games. But if you heard Bickerstaff after the game, he didn't. He certainly didn't like it either. And was uh, first of all, it sounds like he just like ate a bunch of hot wrap yeah, or something. No, right. He was very sick or he something. He always talks that way. But it was way well, it was like, worse. It was yeah. way worse. But he was and he said that they just for they. He, they came out and tried to play Indiana Pacer basketball rather yeah. than Cleveland Cavalier basketball, and I thought that that was very well put. Um, but I also I do have I have some concerns about them l- looking lackadaisical at this point in the season and whatnot, and I don't think they're taking anything for granted. I do think that we, well, you know, as with I think like a lot of Clevelanders, we might we want this to happen in gel sooner than it might be ready to happen in gel. I don't mm-hmm. think they're there yet. I think they probably are still a piece away too. I think. It's going to be really interesting to see what, uh, yeah, probably. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Ricky Rubio adds uh, once he comes back too, because I think that that I think that that's something that people aren't considering, and we don't know. I'm not saying it's going to make everything amazing or fix everything, but I think it's an element that could. It's good. I think it'll definitely be more helpful than uh, than anything. It's not going to blow up any chemistry, and I think that he can be very helpful um, in his role that he was last year. If you remember, that's when those. I think his leadership is great, but you can only lead so much from the bench, and I think he's got to get out there. Gee, you panicked at all? No, I, I'm not really panicked, um, but I don't like certain things. For for young teams, like, I could understand if it was an older team. And older teams are like, yeah, I don't want to play full tilt, you know, defense. I'm tired. I'm, I'm resting my legs for the, for the playoffs. For me, 
the Cavs, uh, prior to this, was the number one defensive team in the league, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're the number one defensive team in the league, it should seem like that would be a thing that would stick with you. To be that good, Mm -hmm. that should be something that doesn't waver because you're number one at that. And people should be excited about the fact that that's you, you see the correlation between that stat and the way you're playing and winning. So when you see a, a, a you know a regression in that, it gives me pause a little bit. I've always said it this too: the the Cavs won't really be a championship contender unless Evan Mobley becomes like. He has to at least be the second best player. Or Mike, if you could get him to be, I'd give me 21 a game, 20 and 10, 20 and 12, two blocks. Right now, 14.5, that's okay, right? One, those numbers are decent. I would like to see that a little higher. I need to see about 12 rebounds. And if you can get him around 20 points and he's a, a game changer, there's sometimes that he, he floats around. And I think JB needed to do it like this, like they used to do Kevin Love back in the day when LeBron was here. We coming out, the focus is Mobley. We want to get him open early. We want to get him some lobs. We want to get him some touches, maybe get him a free throw line, because now he's involved in the game and his confidence when you're a young player goes up when you're getting touches Mm -hmm. and you see the ball goes in. Then that unlocks his ability to play defense and his energy level. They need to get him more involved and don't let him to be him and Allen ain't the same thing. Allen is a is a guy that could get it on rim runs and garbage stuff. Mm-hmm. They need to focus on Mobley to get them where mm-hmm. they want to go. That's yeah. a great point, Gene. There, there are some other teams around the league, and we'll get to what I texted you in a yeah. sec. But the Nets, even with KD, Kyrie, when they had James Harden, ran the first play for Joe Harris every night. It was right. the most predictable play in the entire NBA. The Joe going. Harris double screen. The 76ers last year with Embiid, all the guys they had. Seth Curry got the first shot nine out of ten games. Getting Mobley going early, especially a designated play where let's run some action for him to be aggressive. It's a really good idea, G. Darius Garland, uh, by the way, banged up. Uh, Chris Fedor said yeah, he, his hand, right? His thumb was wrapped in ice after the game. It was swollen. He may miss some time. Oh, we'll keep an eye on that, guys. Um, I, I, one more thing, though. Yeah. I will say last night the Pacers shot. They, they were ridiculous. Yeah. They shot. Yeah. I think they shot like sixty five percent from three. Sixty one percent. You know what I mean? See, you know, one of the like obviously the way they played defense the last few games is disappointing because that's something that it feels like it's mostly about effort on defense. But the Cavs, as we've said, are a young team and they've been a little up and down. But the good news is the ups have been much more frequent than yeah. the downs. The one thing I am concerned about, like for looking ahead, and Brad, you said you, they may be two players short. Two. You know, Kevin Love, even at his best, was not a good defender. <sighs> he's now borderline he's a playable major liability on defense. Like when you're playing, like when they're in the playoffs, I, what well, are they going to do about Kevin Love? Well, first of all, the, you, you talk about the defensive side of the basketball. That's how you win games. There has to be a commitment, especially in the playoffs. You've got to right? be. Able, you have to commit to that's what yeah. I'm going to do, right? And I want to do it every night. You don't have to tell me this is what we're going to do. We got to make a stand. So. There's got to be a commitment there. You look out there, everybody's an offensive player, right? You can't get any stops. To G, I'm not sure that Mobley's ever going to be a 22 and 12 guy, right? Oh, really? This is so. You, so I, I, d- dig down on that. Because well, why he, would you? You, you, because you I, know big because why? of the team or his skill set. Because, because yeah. I have Garland, yeah. and Mitchell out front, right? So 14 could easily become 18. You give right. me 18 and 10, I'm good. The problem here's the problem, G. There are three men away, right? The three men situation's got to be resolved, right? I know Karis is trying to come in and give us some points Dang here. Man. We didn't try uh, mm-hmm. Stevens and Dang everything man. else. It's okay. You need a three man because you need one again. You need I tell you, you need offensive firepower because when one of the two out front go down, like when Garland or Mitchell wasn't having a good game, you only left Garland to go for 46, Mitchell get 12, right? right? You got to have another guy out there that can, can consistently get you a bucket. Don't then, we know, don't we, Brad, sorry to cut you off, but don't we know where this is going? The Cavs are going to make the playoffs this year. Maybe they'll win one round. Maybe Then next year they'll go a little deeper. And then LeBron James can opt out of his contract with the Lakers. Well, LeBron James can opt out in the summer. No, he can't opt out this summer because he re-signed. I thought he had an opt out. His opt, no, his opt out next after year. next year. So here, here's the here's story. I know the he's going to be 40 by then. Here, here's, <laughs> a, here, here's, a, here's the story because, again, you have to figure out what we have going on here, right? 
And I'm not one for playing down the road. Sure. I'm I knocking it. on the door yeah. right now, right? Will you make a move necessary? Because now I saw that after the last three games, defensively, you got a problem here, right? Who is the person out here that's going to – now, Mobley and Allen, they try to clean it up on the back. Who's the guy out front that's front, setting the tone? Saying, front line this is this is not what we're doing out front here. Front line right? pick and roll defense is not, has not been good. Uh, at the, and, and you got to take your challenge at the point of attack. Right. You, you know, you can't be so apt to let a guy blow by you. Listen, they were, si- they, got- G, they were sizing people up last Here, uh, uh, the, the guards from Indiana. Halliburton. Uh, Halliburton, Matthau. They were uh, heel. Halliburton is really good. They were sizing Mikey. They were sizing up and not. They were not backing down from anybody. They were like, give me the ball. And I'm going right at you because you're not going to stop me. After they put Darius in like a couple of situations on the side. They just blew by him. I was yeah. like, dude, but dude, we, the, we cannot. The problem is they don't have the assets. To right. Trade. That's my question. Uh, that's what, what, spot. What, yeah. What do they do? And, to try this, and, and this is the trick to being a great GM in this league. That's mm-hmm. true. Finding something, find find something here. And right. it don't have to be. A, you don't have to be an all star, right. mm-hmm. but you need a presence out here. Yeah. Right. Because right now, I don't think there's anybody there holding anybody accountable for on defensive. That's what JB was talking about last night. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're going to play how you want to play. You right. want to play. You want to play this ESPN type game. Huh? You're going to go up and down here. This yeah. the, this the and one mixtape game we playing out here. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to win nothing. Right. There's documentary on and one, by the way, on, on Netflix right now. I haven't finished it yet. I haven't seen uh, it. Real quick rapid fire before we get the final takes. Is JB the right guy for the Cavs? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll take his word for that. G? Yeah. I agree. I think I I don't understand. I've heard there was some like people complaining about JB. I mean, come on now. Well, really? I think like he's an excellent coach. Actual scuttlebutt? No, I think it was just like fans, okay. you know. Well, people I mean, are prisoner of the moment. I mean, we had Beeline for two seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was Now that was a disaster. That was uh, hilarious. What was, was thinking oh, about? That was pretty brutal. All right. All right, time for final thoughts, guys. Last one of the year, last show of the year. We'll be back on we'll do overtime, but we'll be back on Monday. From, from home. home, who's on? Me, G, and who? Me, you, G. I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Just the three of us. Maybe just three of us. Yeah. We'll be on for the first show of the year from Holmes, and then back in the studio next Tuesday. Brand, you're up first. Yeah. Thanks. So my final take is this: as we close out uh, year 2022, let's end it in uh, in peace, right? No silliness over the weekend here. Let's sit back, enjoy a great sports weekend. We've got obviously I got them Terps on today. I got. Uh, Ohio State football long because I'm going to see a man about a dog before I see a man mm-hmm. about a flag, right? Mm-hmm. That's what is going on here. And then on Sunday, 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 the return of Watson. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm reveling in what Bull was talking about here. Watson with a big day here on let's Sunday go. in the go. warm weather, the DMV, because you got to calm people. People here, you know, they they go to the they go to the nth degree here real quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, the world is sinking. The world is sink. I like relax, relax. We already had a tough hand with that suspension being handed down here, and we get into reality. Watson will return after much work is put in. He will return, and in the off season, what we can hope for as we move into 2023 is that what the Cavs make a good run here in 2023, make the necessary moves to get better here, and then we get into the summer. You have the Indians, the Indians. The Guardians doing their thing again, right? Tito and the good mm-hmm. management. And it was going to the fall. And by that time, I hope that the Cleveland Browns have their act together and figure out exactly what they have at their disposal mm-hmm. and get out of their own way and stop tripping on their own feet. Good. Mike. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to use my final take to share something from um, a holiday special that I did for WKYC. This was going to be used last week. I forget why I didn't air it, but it would have made more sense then. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this as a commercial break. Quick commercial break. Let's take a look. Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Your one-stop shop for last-minute Christmas gifts for the gentleman your mom is with now. Stepdads are always hard to shop for because your relationship is complicated. But at Stepdad Station, we can help because we know what stepdad's like. We got all the best stepdad gifts here, such as hot sauce combo packs, beaded seat covers, Ohio State grill brushes, wow. homebrew kits, ZZ Top keychains, and belt clip phone holsters. <laughs> Located in the old Parmatown Mall in the space where the Babbages used to be, Stepdad Station has everything that stepdads like, such as sausage variety samplers, 
radar detectors, Ohio lottery scratchers, Bud Light Lime six packs, those little ropes that hold your sunglasses on, Aerosmith's Pandora's box box sets, oh and these things. It's all right here at Stepdad Station, right in between the T-Mobile store and that place where they sell swords. We have everything. Personalized beer coasters, humorous novelty signs, American Sniper on DVD, camo phone cases, various jerkies, wow. and Harley Davidson camping chairs. Damn. He's dead Let's on. Face it, you and your stepdad are probably never going to be on the same page, but you have to get him something this Christmas or it'll make your mom sad. She'd at least like you to make an effort. So whether you're looking for Corona Party Guy type shirts, Bernie Kosar autographed footballs, or black denim steely Dan hats, <laughs> it's all here waiting for you at Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Stepdad Station. Real gifts for fake dads. <laughs> Yeah. That's so, you, that's dead, a, you was dead on all of those oh stepdad joints. When you said with that, that radar detector uh, joint, yeah. oh yeah. my god. They're always just a little behind on tech, stepdads are. Just oh, a little behind yeah. on the tech. Oh, uh, that is so a lot of that's good. That's pretty good, Mike. Thanks, man. That's funny, that's my G. Well, my, my, my New Year's resolution is this, man. You know, a lot of people don't know. We've been here six months. Um, you know, we've eight got months. eight months. We got the green light to go uh, to, you know, March and continue on and try to, you know, bring the best content we can to you guys. So my job in the next three months is to try to, you know, take this thing and, and give as much effort as I can to make ultimate Cleveland sports show a fixture. Um, and, and so sometimes you got to you got to say it. I know a lot of people say, well, you know, don't tell them what was going on. I'm like, listen, that's what telethons is for. I, I'm trying to tell it. Let, you know, this the, the, this show is a product of the fans, right? Um, this this show will go as far as the fans will take us in their support. And that doesn't have to just be support uh, monetarily in, in terms of memberships. We would appreciate that. But the support happens where you hit those like buttons. You you call people. You reach out to Tegna. You reach out to WKYC and say, look, bro, be heard. Have your voice out there. Say, look. This is the best show out here, man. This is something that's groundbreaking. We appreciate the, uh, the authenticity. We appreciate the topics they talk about. We appreciate the energy level that they bring. And hopefully as this thing grows, we grow with the community. You know, we don't want to be a, a, a fly-by-night type organization and we just show up and talk sports for about, a, a, you know, eight to six months and we disappear. We want to make this thing something where you look back and say, remember when the remember the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show was on, man, when it first came on? Look how far it came or look how much of a fixture it is now on the internet and television. So, you know, we are a product of the people. That's why I got a belt that says the people's champs because I understand how proud and how and how pivotal people are to your success. This isn't just me up here. I look at it as a partnership with us and the community. And so I feel like uh, you guys will, will will take us as far as we go. And if you were willing to, we're willing to put in the work and continue to give you great content for, on a long-term basis. Well said, G. And, and when you see us on the street or wherever in a supermarket or – Always say hello. Don't be Pull afraid up. to say hello. I know I can tell every once in a while, like most people I meet, they'll come up and say hello. But every once in a while, I see, I'll see a guy, a guy looking at like, me and, he, and he's thinking, I can tell he's thinking to himself, should I go say hello? Uh, you know. I promise Bull will not laser you. I, we, I, we good. Say hello. I love when people come say up. Say hello, man. My we wife gets a kick out of it. I prefer and not to be And we do approached. appreciate I, we, I <laughs> When I went to wrestling the other night, I met some really cool fans and a couple said, I miss you on the radio. A lot of times with older fans have had a hard time transitioning. Yeah. So if you're a younger fan, bring them to the, bring them to YouTube. We love what we're doing here. As G just said, we're going to keep doing this as long as they let us. So, uh, it, but it, you, you fans are so much a, a part of it. I, I want to say one more thing. Uh, you know, I've been through a lot and my family's been through a lot over the last couple of years. We've had a lot going on. Some I've talked about, some I haven't, but um, I think, you know, life is short in the grand scheme of things. And I, 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 as I talked about before, keeping things in perspective, you know, I, I get aggravated about a lot of stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that do. Keep in mind what's important as we celebrate the holidays, as we spend time with our families. Remember what's important. Family, friends, mm -hmm. these are things that are most important. Sometimes we obsess about nonsense, clothes or, or uh uh, social media or our phones and yeah these are extra things but remember 
Remember, the most important thing is your family, your friends, the people that are important to you, the people that are there for you, that love you. Keep those people as the number one priority. That means more than anything else. Absolutely. Everybody, guys, happy new happy year. Happy new year to you. Happy new year. Happy new year, everybody. Everybody. Happy new year guys. Absolutely. And for those of you who are uh, members of the coaches tier, we got one more bonus content coming up for you next. What are we talking about? Mikey in the bo- in the boat. Our favorite sports memories of 2022. That's uh. an overtime next for the rest of you. Have a great new year. Uh, G and Mikey McNuggets and I uh, will be on uh, Jeff back with us. TBD. I don't know. On the two minute warning show this Sunday for the second to last Browns game. We love you all. We'll see you later. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Peace.